sponsored by BetterHelp. We say this all the time. I don't know that we do. We definitely do. We gotta switch them like how they do in anime. Like, you know how like a different like uh, <laughs> a different season. <laughs> season. Yeah, we have like that Naruto one where they're just like flying through the air. <laughs> <laughs> we should be on season three soon. So yeah, we need to. Do yeah, that. We <laughs> <laughs> hello, 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 everybody! Welcome to another episode of that. One Piece Talk. My name is Larry. Lawrence. Sam. Lino. And this is that One Piece Talk, <laughs> where we talk One Piece. Woo! Let's go. I hope every time I do that, woo, there's somebody's dog that just goes ape, bro. <laughs> they start howling, too. I was one time on a date, and it was hard not to bark. Come on, man. I'm serious. Yeah. Come on, bro. I was just looking at her like this. Come on, bro. <laughs> Trying not to bark. All right, my bad. I haven't, gone, date with, I haven't gone on a date in that long. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Single single boy mm -hmm. out here instead of joy boy. Single boy. <laughs> single boy. Abstinent boy. Abstinent boy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're so stupid. I should have broken. Sebastian, you're so dumb. So. <laughs> oh, jeez, bro. Anyway, <laughs> what's up, everybody? Uh, to everybody that's listening, thank you so much for listening to us on your way to work and also whatever you're doing. Uh, to everybody on YouTube, thank you, thank you for being here as well. Appreciate you. If you haven't liked the video, please like the video. It helps out. And if you haven't joined our Discord, please join our Discord. It's a great time. Also, the agenda for today, because we do have an agenda. Um, we will be reacting to the Yu Yu Hakusho live action, because oh. we love Yu Yu Hakusho. You cool with that? It's the live action. I love anime. <laughs> oh, I just, it just hit me. Like, I, I know. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I just yeah, yeah. hit me, Yeah, even Marv's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's, you know, it's very... Yes or no, bro? If it's not cool, I thought we are doing cool, the chapter, bro. though. I, we're going to do the chapter. chapter. You can say yes or no. Nah. All right. Avatar? The Last Airbender? Yeah. The trailer? I didn't see that. Are you cool are with you it? Are you cool with us reacting to that? That should be fine, I think. All right. Is that... Is it? No. You, All right. Tell, you tell us. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> asking you the question. <laughs> I didn't see the trailer, so I don't know. Guys, this is what happens when you don't... Brief people yeah, on what bad. you want to do before yeah, you bad. do it live. I right. think that should be fine. All right, so we're going to do the Avatar live trailer <laughs> uh, reaction uh, today. We will be going over some SBS from SBS 107 uh, for two things that Oda stated that are pretty cool. And then we'll be getting into the chapter discussion and then phone calls. So for everybody that's just tuning in, uh, that's the agenda. And, uh, yeah, let's actually get into the live action first for Avatar, and then we'll get into the super chats and say hi to chat and all that stuff. Yeah. So that's going to be the, the thing. So, Marv, whenever you're ready. You, you can make a little screen of us, right? We're on it right now. All right, but we can't see anything. Yeah, yeah, flip it. You can flip it because I know they do it big. Pause. And then we'll be the smaller one. We're not going to be too small, though, right? No? Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are they? Yeah, I got a little insight into what... how Marv works. Yeah. 
Marv Productions. It looked crazy. I see it now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you see that? Yeah, I do. Yo. Marv is blacking us out. <laughs> I guess in the meantime, I could say. Nah, no, I don't see black. anything. We we see each other now. Nothing. All right. In no. the meantime, I can react to. Mm. Oh, I see it. I see the Netflix now on this thing. Not on this screen though. But I see it on this one. Oh man. Yeah. All right. Never mind then. No live action <laughs> reactions today. <laughs> that was a solid play. It was a good attempt. Yeah, it was a this good episode attempt. This episode is. We we tried a little bit. I blame Lawrence. Yeah, definitely Lawrence's fault. We bringing that back? Yeah, we'll do it next week. We'll be better prepared. Will we though? Yeah. All right. They can see us, Marv, or no? I can't see us. That's why. That's why I was like, oh. Oh, there we go. All right, there we go. All right, we're good now. All right. Let's go into these SBS questions. So. Somebody asked about um, who took Kid's arm. Mm. And it was relayed by Oda that it was Ben Beckman. What y'all think about that? We'll start with Law. Um, <clears throat> so I did hear something like that. Uh, I, just curious, I want to know how. You know, because like, <laughs> what I mean is, did he like shoot it off? Because Ben Beckman doesn't like wield a sword he uses like a, a, a rifle or something mm. so like uh did he like hockey hard in a bullet and just rip that arm right off with one shot or something you know like what are the means what he did to like take uh kid's arm because obviously we know ben beckham is way sh stronger than kid you know and i think also i'm not upset about it but i like the fact when they mention that you don't normally get to see the captain right I was kind of hoping Ben Beckham was with that category, as in, kid didn't even get to see Ben Beckham either. Like, it was just more like, um, like, not the first two. Like, you didn't see the captain, you didn't see the right-hand man either. And you just got done in like that, mm. you know? But not like I'm disappointed about it. I was like, okay, it makes sense, because give kid a little bit more credit, you know? But, um, yeah, that's all I really have. So? Um, I mean... <laughs> I've seen people using this as like a W for kid. Yeah. And, and I'm like, is it? <laughs> like, like I, people had already theorized. I think I was one of them, that Ben was one of the guy that did it. I didn't think yeah. that that meant too much. You still didn't get to Shanks. You still didn't, it didn't say how difficult it was for Beckman to do that to you. We didn't know the circumstances of, of that either. Mm -hmm. Right? My question is, did Ben like, Beat him with the with the because that's how he fights, right? Like he uses the gun to to, to swing on people. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever actually seen him shoot it, right? Yeah. Like I know I know he aimed it at Kazaru, but was he just beating kid down with the gun and eventually <laughs> targeting? Like, that's kind of crazy. That would be wild. Um, I would assume he cut it off. I don't think he shot it off. Yeah. That's I, I mean it's possible, but I think he probably got captured. Like he got defeated by whoever, whether it was Ben or not. And Ben took the arm to be like, yo, calm down. Like, you know? Yeah. One of those kind of situations. The show that we're not playing. Mm. So. You know, it would be crazy. I'm sorry. I mm -hmm. just thought of, you know how a uh, kid uh, uses, like, his mechanism to, like, pull a bunch of different weapons towards him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> While he's doing that, Beck just catches the sword and chops off his arm. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, so, covering his arm and belly. He's like, nah. He's like, you're going to stop that. <laughs> um, well, yeah. well, yeah. Larry? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't change anything. Uh, it would have been nice if it was Monster the Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that I was am, too disrespectful. I felt like that was kind of like, he just like my thought him? process at the time. <laughs> but it doesn't mean anything, like, even though if it was Beck, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. Doflamingo cut Law's arm pretty easily. Yeah. And he's nowhere near, like, Ben Beckman's level. Yeah. So, if Law and Kid are at that same point, it's like, it's kind of like overkill if Ben does it. Yeah. So that's how I look at it. There's no dub. To be had on either side, I would say. Yeah, like I don't think, because even then we don't know how far into the game that was. Like, if yeah, it, like it's not the kid that we saw in Wano. It was kid coming, like you know. It was yeah. It's, I don't know. It's just it's just a nice interesting fact to get. I mm. kind of wish we would have saw it. I do like that they alluded to it 
mm-hmm. in the manga. Where yeah. it's like, of course he got a grudge against you. So I, that sparked the whole thought process that Ben did it. So it's good that we, we have that confirmation now. Yeah. But it doesn't really add much. They, they're, what they're probably trying to do is give kid, kid more credit by saying, oh, Ben Beckham had to be the one to do it. You know? But that's not really what they're saying. Just because someone, I, for some reason I'm thinking like one shot it, but like takes you out doesn't mean they have to do it. It's mm. just like this person is the one that did it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So but they're probably using that to boost up kids. Say, like, oh, it had to be Ben Beckham if it wasn't Shanks. But that's not what Oda was doing. Yeah. All right. The second one was Oda also stated that Bonnie's official Devil Fruit uh, name is the Toshi Toshi no Mi. And it basically means an age manipulation human fruit. What did you guys think about this? I'm going to start with Seb. Um, I thought we kind of had confirmation of that already. No? No. It we, never was no. confirmed. No. It doesn't change anything for me. Yeah, I it mean, doesn't. Yeah. Things in this chapter do, but yeah. <laughs> I won't get to that when we get to it. <laughs> um, but no, it doesn't change anything for me. Yeah, it didn't change anything. Yeah. Not our age either. <laughs> My bad, yeah. yeah. <laughs> need a no, Mark, more. don't don't put that sound, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, let's say what's up to chat. Oh, Let's yeah. do some super chats, and then we'll get right into the chapter, guys. Yeah, we got a bunch of people in chat. I see Goku2241, uh, John Veeb, uh, Zai, Key, Sofo, Tor- uh, Terrence Weber, Jordan D. Law, Toby, what up, Toby, JJ, the Jet Plane, The Law, uh, Jordan Weitzel, Weasel, uh, Wesley Coquie, Chalkwe, Slat, uh, Quado Asante, Young Lou, Young Tokyo, Tyler F, Sticks, Ben, Speedy Davis, Red Shambles, Mindset, Tarif Spencer, Twilight Straw Hat, Rocky D. Zeki, uh, Michael Coleman Jr., Ayo Let's Go, Trev, Austin Hart, Armigilil, Armigilly? You got this, bro. Armigilly, <laughs> Merka. I mm. got it. Red mm-hmm. Hair Shankton. What up, Shankton? Mm-hmm. Shankton, we got a trade for you, bro. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mahmoud mm-hmm. Faru, <laughs> shut up, bro. Diego Keys, Nerd Taku, what's up, Taku? Ta- I didn't get to check the uh, the live react, but how was it having Taku on? He was going crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah, okay. he was he was going crazy. Oh, we got Josh on the chat. What up, Josh? Yeah, he was going crazy. He was very good addition. Cool. To be honest, I try not to catch, like watch your live actions. We so talked that, about this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why, bro. I still like the stream, though. Like the stream, y'all, if y'all haven't already. Yeah. But we did get a couple super chats sitting. We got 50 euros from the broker. <laughs> Get the broker. Yeah, 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 okay. It says, Hello, everyone. Thank you for your supportive influence in my life. I'm sorry I can't stay, but I wanted to say I will call in next week to hopefully start getting back to normal. I have a theory for you that is dearest to my heart. All my love, Broker. Broker, hey. thank you so much for all that you've done for this channel. And I, I, those words are too kind. Um, I'm glad we could be any sort of support for you in the time of turmoil that you're going through right now. Um, I know you said you can't stay, but glad to have you back, bro. Mm-hmm. Seriously. 100%. Share the same sentiments with Seb. Thank you, bro. Yeah, likewise. All right, we got another two from Shar Jamil. It says, is Seb in Emu Gang? Hashtag Kuma got no Riz. Um, one Kuma got Riz. I don't know why people say that. Yeah, I don't know why people say that. He got Riz. Uh, to, be ter- to be determined on the Emu Gang thing for me, I'm going to be honest. What? In other words, yes. Listen, to That's be determined. Crazy. I like villains. I always have. That's how are you? How are you surprised? I'm a villain guy. But... Usually there's a reason behind you liking a villain and like That's why it says to be determined. I gotta see. And also that's crazy. I gotta see, man. I gotta see. Charlos and the Frost. <laughs> <laughs> we got there. Charles don't even know who Emu is. Char- uh, and another two from Kronos, it says, Could Law beat Brooke? And if so, how? Wow. Like Lawrence? No, he or means, Law. He means Law uh Trafagar. Absolutely. You yeah. don't know that. He can mean you. Either one is laws winning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, <okay. laughs> oh man! But yeah, I got I got law. Mm. I don't know how that's a question, really. Uh, we got another five from Project Iceman. It says, "So I looked up what three stars mean that Dragon wears. 
was wondering if it was a reference to his rank in the Marines. Apparently, it's Vice Admiral. I don't know. Possibly, but I kind of feel like when Dragon was part of the Marines, he was kind of young. You know, it would be like the youngest Vice Admiral ever. You know? Like, yeah. Not that I, like, it may not mean anything, but he was like, what? Uh, low, te- no, high teens, what, low 20s? Mm hmm. So I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything for that. I, I see three stars. I see three star general from the Bloods, bro. I'll be honest. Wait, what? I'm thinking, if Drake's a vice admiral now, then maybe. Is he? Yeah, he is. He's a vice admiral. Mm. But I don't know how old he is. Is he in his thirties? I think. So. I don't know how old he is. I think so. I'm gonna right. keep it a bug. We got another 100 from Sofo. It says, "Yo, these old DDTs going crazy." Larry speaking facts. Rosinante top one in verse. Hashtag no more named attacks. Hashtag where your thunder bagua at. Also, Shin <laughs> got conquers hockey. Hashtag ain't closing my robe for no one. <laughs> I'm glad we got Shin to put a shirt on for the DDTs, man. <laughs> He be coming off work now, so he can't be in his robe. But thank flexing. you for the super chat. And those those old DDTs was kind of wild, bro. If you see any yeah. wild takes, feel free to clip them. Yeah, we were going <laughs> we were going crazy, <laughs> but they were so good. They were. Yeah. We got another two from Ben Fresh. It says Larry's single boy, but he's also dome boy. Oh. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> what is that? Yo, that sounded so crazy. That was kind of wild. I've said the word crazy like five times already. We got another 10 from Mahmoud Farhoud. It says, I feel as if Green Bull's Del Fruit could be, could be more overhyped than we have seen. Overpowered than we have seen. Though I feel as if his character could have been portrayed better, I wonder how many uses he had with his Del Fruit. The fruit itself is extremely useful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Maybe not in a, in a strength sense, but... Just in life, like it would have been nice to see him do solar beam, mm. hmm. like Venusaur from Pokemon. I just want Green Bull to be as strong as the first Okage, which is crazy. I know, I know it is. Yeah, that's that, what I want. He actually could be stronger with because it's not just wood; it's like all plants. Right. He could be a mixture of a bunch of different, like you know, universe characters with that ability. Mm. What do you think plants? his mornings are like? Come on, stop. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you think he has a morning wood attack? I hope not, but <laughs> I want to put it past Green Bull or Oda. Or Oda. <laughs> or Oda. No, honestly. He has a green thumb. <laughs> Come on, bro. We got another 10 from Zai. It says, much love to one of the best anime podcasts out there. The community that y'all have fostered is absolutely amazing, and y'all are phenomenal creators. But Larry, you can't be barking if you got cock. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're alive when you said that. On what? The bark thing. Oh yeah. You. I thought we were alive yet. I don't know why. <laughs> That's crazy. It happens, yeah. <laughs> it don't. Oh, uh, we got another ten from my mood. Farhood. It says Beckman taking kids' arm may seem confusing as he uses a gun, but it also builds up Beckman's credibility and gives more reason as to why Kizaru backed off from him. I mean, yeah, a little bit. I don't think you'd have to hold kid in relatively high regard for all that. If Beckham is just shooting off limbs, it's crazy. That's kind of wild. Shouldn't Yasa be doing that? <laughs> you got a better be. sniper in the crew, right? <laughs> uh, we got another 10 from Rox Dizeki. It says, What are y'all thoughts on the headcanon that Katakuri gave up versus Luffy because he saw what would happen in their fight if their fight were to go any further? Luffy would awaken Gear 5th, and Cat knew he stood no chance. I would hate it. That is, it's not the no. point. That's no, not the yeah, point yeah. of why, he, yeah. at least to me, based off the story that I was reading. And, and, and that's just like, to giving up, I'm trying to think, for example, do we have a record in One Piece where a conqueror just gave up because they thought they were going to lose? That doesn't, that's not a real thing in One Piece, you know? It was more like, um, it wasn't due to him giving up because he knew he couldn't beat Luffy because the whole time he thought he was superior to Luffy. And then out of nowhere, I can't beat him now? That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, it, it was more about he knew he couldn't break Luffy's will, and Luffy would never stop trying, to me anyway. That's not so much about winning and losing. It's more like, he, I've said this a bunch of times, every single time any single character in Big Mom's family started valuing or feeling appreciation 
or having some level of like respect respect for another person, they flipped on Big Mom. Kata Curry is no exception. Yeah, he's just a conqueror, so it was more extreme. Oh, more yeah. extreme things needed to happen. And but his Ka- respect mm-hmm. for Luffy grew further than it, his fear and love for Big Mom was. Yeah. So. And to kind of prove that the sh- the anime and the ma- uh, the manga kind of show this. For example, he grew to like Luffy as a person and respect him so much is that when he was like laying down right and Burle is like t- tending to him, he asks about Luffy. Right. Then she responds, "I don't want to tell you because it's going to make you happy." Mm-hmm. And then she so she tells him that Luffy got away from Big Mom. Then you see him smiling. Didn't he smile beforehand because he, like, future saw so, her telling him? Yeah. I, I don't know if I maybe yeah, I read so, that Maybe. Wrong, but yeah. No, that could happen. But either way, he was smiling that Luffy got away. Right. Showing that his feeling, like, that he remire, admired Luffy, they respected his dude because Luffy didn't give up, and his strong will and capableness, you know? Like, they had an honorable fight. And, yeah. You got any input? No comment. Because <laughs> you're not going to like what I'm going to have to say. Say it, bro. Speak your mind. Plot. <laughs> he's, he's not wrong <laughs> he's not wrong but we got another also he ain't future C in gear fifth bro what are you talking about anyway uh, we got another two from Project Iceman it says Seb sorry for the child Bonnie joke from a while ago ah it's gonna be a lot of apologies <laughs> he's <still excited. laughs> um, we got another five from Kimi Woku Chimi Woku Debate crossovers, do you think, are more than coincidence, such as Itosai Ito and Sasaki Kojiro, Vagabond, compared with Shanks and Luffy? That's a little too far of a scale for me. I don't know who um, Ito, Itosai, maybe I do from Vagabond. I'm not great with the names. Um, But, like, are you saying compared as far as fighting each other or just, like, their relationship? It's been a while since you, I read Vagabond. Have you read Vagabond Light? No. no I know who Kyoshiro is, but well, Lionel believes, for example, that Musashi and Odin are supposed to be very similar. Like, uh, I don't know if Oda based, I'm not saying based, but uh, like, there's a few similarities. Oh, this dude. Ah! Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Well, he's like actively raising uh, Sasaki Kojiro. Ito, Ito is. Mm-hmm. versus Shanks is, like, away from Luffy. Like, he's his mentor yeah. in that light, but he's not. Yeah. yeah he, they're, they're very different relationships. I haven't finished Vagabond. I don't remember if Lawrence or Lionel have either. But from to my knowledge, and I'm, rel- I'm like, in that arc right there with uh, Ito and Sasaki. But yeah, It's different relationships. They have a different relationship to me anyway Yeah. than, than Shanks and Luffy do. Because there's a part where, like, uh, there's a part where, like, he used, like, live... Uh, combat to uh to train Kyojiro mm-hmm. and like left them by himself and everything mm-hmm. if you want to speak that whole luffy's whole pirate career is like that but that's yeah. like different you know yeah but the genesis of your question for other crossovers i think we've said it on the pod before i think that kobe and uh garb's relationship is very similar to all might and deku um there's other ones that are similar throughout mangas everywhere that i think could be related or even beyond that like i think lionel has said on the pod before for some of our older uh, uh, fans, um, the Great Mouse Detective is like Law and Doflamingo. Like that's their <laughs> oh relationship. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's there's a lot. Oda references a lot of different bangers, mediums, and things to, yeah, to that create makes sense. characters. How would you know, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to get through these, bro. I'm we almost gotta, done, bro. We got a chapter. Mister, let's do two video reactions before the chapter. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. I wasn't expecting full-blown three-minute answers for each of these. Listen, bro. <laughs> no offense, guys. Well, we got a chapter to go. We only have a couple of minutes. All right. Uh, another five from Y2K. It says, hello, Super Chat. Watching from YouTube. Just want to say that Blackbeard dodged an FBI visit when he escaped from a kind who had left body. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag buggy gang. Yeah, man. A lot of us, a lot of us did. Yeah, bro. Y'all was, was wilding out. Another five uh, from OG Line says, what's up, boys? Love all you do, especially all the motivational stuff. Just finished Yu Hawk Show, and I wanted to know y'all's favorite characters. Mine is Kuwabara. Hashtag buggy gang. You were missing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was Karama. Yeah, I was a big fan of Yusuke. He was yeah. like the first main character I've ever truly like messed with heavy. Like he was legit my favorite, and then Hiei was, and then Karama. 
I, I'm all day. I liked uh, Yusuke and then, you know, my boy Ryzen when he showed up. Yeah, yeah. Ryzen was dope, too. Ryzen was pretty dope. Gen- yeah. Shout out to Genkai, too. I like Genkai a lot. Yeah. She was one of the better uh, trainer, teacher persons that I... She was she was kind of annoying though. I like Genkai. She was annoying. Oh, back, bro. I like I like I like their dynamic. That was mm-hmm. like the first woman trainer that we had in in anime. I yeah, like, she was just like fire, and she was crazy bro. strong, strong and, and like skilled. And she had a direct like relationship with the main antagonist. I like I liked Genkai's story. Yeah, she was out here using her other... story was cool. I think she her as know. a character was just annoying sometimes. Like Kurobara, like he was always annoying, but there was just a charm that you liked about him. She had like no charm. It was just, yo, I'm just annoying sometimes and really cool. I like Genkai, bro. Yeah. She should have stayed RIP though. Damn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but that's all the super chats. All right. No. Let's get into it, guys. Um, again, thank you so much, guys, for being here. If you haven't liked the video, please like the video. If you haven't joined our Discord yet, please join our Discord. Uh, but yeah, guys, let's get into it. So, chapter 1098. Uh, with this brand new chapter, we have a new reader request from Noda Skywalker. He says, Brooke busting out a solo using an electric eel to power his guitar. Also, the title of this chapter is Bonnie's Birth. Did you guys have any interesting ideas as to why Oda chose this reader request? No. <laughs> um, no, not really. It just made me think of... We haven't seen. I know we, we see Brooke use ice a lot. We haven't seen him use like lightning at all, right? Because I'm thinking, why is this dude able to just tap into like all these other elements <laughs> for no reason <laughs> at all, you know? But besides from that, um, nothing really. Uh, all right. I kind of got something. Of course you do, bro. <laughs> of course you do. Y'all be having fun with these, bro. Uh-huh. All right. So you know how I usually go off with like just stupid theories for these things. All right, I kind of got like a, a interesting one, uh-huh. like a like a goofy but silly but like likable one. All right, so hear me out. I always gotta say that first. <laughs> <laughs> Oda's love for music is pretty well known, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it probably holds more importance than we are ever led to believe. So Brooke seems to be based off of like Jimi Hendrix and other musicians like Slash and like Ozzy Osbourne, which means music runs through his veins even though he doesn't have veins. (laughs) Yo! (laughs) (laughs) But we've seen Brooke manipulate people and animals uh, with enchanting songs, right? So for example, he played uh, Namudi Uta, uh, Namudi Uta to create a soothing tone that puts people to sleep. Mm The animal example being Laboon, who sings his songs, uh, and is also a crucial part to his dream. During his two-year time skip, he became known as the Soul King, which is interesting because when we go to Whole Cake Island and we are introduced to Big Mom, she was singing with her homies using her soul power. Brooke being a counterpart to her ability, was also he was also able to like destroy her homies. So how does this connect to the cover story? Remember how Oda usually experiments with his ideas in movies? Well, I believe Film Red was actually the introduction to Brooke's purpose on the Straw Hats. Brooke having a move called Namudi Uta is very similar to Shanks' daughter's name, Uta, who was a singer herself that could transport people's consciousness to another dimension while simultaneously summoning a demon lord by the name of Top Musica or the Demon King of Songs. During this movie, Uta's, uh, Uta sings to an entire world via broadcast, and they all fell under her spell, which imprisoned them. I think Brooke will do the same with his electric guitar, but for the sole purpose of sharing the rhythm of Joy Boy's drums of liberation. But not only that, after he's shared this rhythm with the people, Luffy will destroy the, the line and create the all blue, which will then bring all fish and fishmen to the sun, and it would signify the freedom of fishmen people as a whole to let them realize the sun's warm embrace. Unlike Top Musica being the demon king of songs, Brooke will be known as the soul king of liberation, signifying across the whole world that they are as free as Joy Boy once was. Sebastian and Loki like it. I love it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't just like it, I love it, bro. That was heat. I don't know how you got all that. <laughs> the electric guitar with the eel behind you. But I like it. I do. 
Yeah. Especially the Thai music of Thai. Yeah. I call it thought music. Thought music. Yeah. Yeah. Well. What, you want me to comment on the thought music? You don't have to. Okay, I'm, you don't I'm, want I'm good. to comment on the thought music. I'm also, my Larry's theory in general. <laughs> oh, no, I like it. I like it. It reminded me what I said uh, earlier about um, uh, how, you know, Kuma and his family is able to hear, the, you know, mm -hmm. the melody. And what if uh, Brooke uh, heard it or learned it? Like, what, it, what would that mean, you know? Because we already know that Brooke has the ability to, like you said, influence people, animals, and others. What would he, what would he do with... The, um, the Nika um, drum beat. Yeah, so, no, I like your theory. It's dope. Thanks, bros. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good, bro. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's get into some super chats again. All right. We got a couple super chats since last time. We got 280 from Garbage D Fish. It says Larry acting like Sanji from Z Movie in real life. Hashtag oh. Evil Gang. <laughs> Yeah, y'all gotta let people live about the body stuff, yo. All right. We got another five from Buggy Dragon. It says, oh my God, so happy to have Broker back. Same. I cannot wait for his theory. Calls ain't the same without you. Can we please get a Broker Potter vid with all of his calls? That, that could be dope. It's a lot of work. That's <laughs> <laughs> a lot. We got another five from DJ Stanley. It says, it's my first live, guys. Been watching y'all for months now. Because of y'all, I'm caught up on the manga. Used to be anime only. You're nice. welcome. <laughs> Thanks for everything. <laughs> should, have, should have saved the world. You're welcome till after that. Yeah. But all right. We got another five, uh, six from Sulphur. It says, hope y'all are having a great day. Just wanted to show some support. Back with some more greetings from Holland. Keep up the amazing streams. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate you guys. So nice today. Yeah, that are always nice. Now. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready to jump back in? Let's do it. All right, so um, we opened up the chapter at Baltigo, the Revolutionary Army's headquarters. They're yelling that a rebellion in the South Blue needs aid, and Ivankov states he can't do anything since his ship is full to the brim with Goa Kingdom's people who are injured. Kuma says he'll go. Ivankov hates the idea since Ginny's been captured. Kuma's been pushing himself too hard. Kuma arrives at the rebellion, and he isn't smiling. His face has changed. Dragon then gets word that Ginny was taken by a celestial dragon to become his wife. The country that Kuma was protecting uh, wins their rebellion. Marines get word of it. People label the revolutionaries the heroes of the people. Kuma calls into Dragon and is stern with him. He says he's tired and will take a ship home. What did you guys think about this part of the chapter? All right. And, yeah, I'll start with Seb. All right, so one, you know, I, I expected a tone shift to take place after Ginny got captured. Yeah. Um, we were pretty lighthearted before that. Um, I love seeing Kuma's face. And I know we'll probably touch on it later. I don't know if you have a dedicated time for it, but I did notice early mm. that the drawing was a little different. Yeah. That, uh... Oda didn't seem to be able to finish the, the chapter as far as the shading and the, the drawing here. Um, it wasn't as noticeable in the beginning, but I noticed it. But it got a little more heavy later on in the chapter. But that first page I thought was pretty well done in comparison yeah. to some of the rest. But I, I was like, actually going to talk about that later. Bit. Okay. Yeah, after the chapter was over. Um, okay. So, but in general, like, you see in that little flashback panel the shocked look on Kuma's face mm -hmm. where it's like, what? Like, he couldn't believe it. He was so, like, hurt by that that you you understand why his face is what it was beforehand yeah um and in general I'll, I'll touch more on this later but i know we joke a lot about dragon and like in action this was the most jarring of that to to me this mm, chapter it i'm was. surprised it was um and i thought I, you were gonna feel differently no nah, i'm gonna i'm gonna weigh a little heavier on that as we get farther in um just because of the subject matter of the chapter but this was the chapter. Like, I know it's been a lot of jokes and a lot of, like, yo, he doesn't do anything, blah, blah, blah. This was the one time I needed him to do something. So. I mean, you, just, I yeah. get you want to save it for probably the for next later. part. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I won't bother you about it then. Mm -hmm. uh, Law? Um, yeah. Honestly, I like the showing the timeline because this is the goal of Kingdom, so this is when they get Sabo. Yep. 
So I thought that was pretty cool, tying that together. And just seeing Kuma, like, uh, he's in, he's just throwing himself in combat because of the loss of his close friend. Or even, like you say, like, potential wife, you know? Like, someone, the closest person to him, the one he used to live with, is gone now, kidnapped by, in a way, you could say his worst enemies, right? The people who've been, like, in, have influence or had a major impact on his life in a negative way for the longest. Now your closest person in your life, your friend, your uh, potential wife is was captured by them and taken by them, right? And it's sad to say, like, to be like, I think you got there, right? Where it says, yeah, to be a Slusher's Dragon's wife, right? I'm not gonna lie. As soon as as soon as it said right here earlier about um, I don't know if I could I could say it, yeah, but I'll say real that later. But as soon as I saw that, I already knew about you know about mm-hmm. Bonnie mm-hmm. yeah I already knew I was like I saw that I was like oh my goodness like right so but the like, he's throwing himself in the battle and you see the look in his eyes it's like um, you don't see because I think afterwards we we, always, we don't see Kuma making his face at all beforehand it was always like I'm the gentle giant I'm the polite person I'm not a I'm not necessarily a warrior I don't really care about fighting I'm more of a person that likes healing people and now we see this, it's like all, it's like sinister Kuma, you know? Not going into his uh, title as the tyrant, because I think he gets that as a pirate or as, you know, a king. But this is probably that, more, that side of him, that ruthless Kuma that they're playing into where he's just throwing himself in the battle, like, I'll go. And then even too, it's just like he's tired. It's like he's not even really associating or communicating with his um, the revolutionaries. It's like, I go to fight. And like, no, you should. You've been going at it for a while now. What um, Ivankov was saying, you, like you should chill out. He just goes anyway, dives right into a battle. Then I'm gonna head back to the ship. I'm tired, you know. And like I feel like Dragon's face kind of shows something. Like obviously this person Kuma, he's not okay. And uh, to me, Dragon shows he's a little, with that expression shows he's a little wor- worried about him. But it's like how do you? He understands it, you know. Like what do you do with the situation, right? And we didn't get that much far ahead. Um, so uh, that's all I got for now. Uh, for me, I think I'll take the same route as Seb. I don't have much to say regarding the beginning of this chapter. Uh, I was really... Uh, this is what I try to tell people, too, is that what dragon necessarily means for me doesn't mean strength-wise in the fact of his own strength. It's the fact that he could just overturn countries when the, within a certain amount of time and bring them to his side. So he kind of has like this secret organization that's literally toppling the world government on all islands that are being oppressed by, you know, kingdoms that are oppressing their own people. That's the danger level. That's what makes him the most dangerous criminal in the show. It doesn't necessarily mean his strength wise. So when people try to like, when people don't necessarily understand the story and then I say it in a specific way and it's not something that they can internally like how, how do I say it's not something that they can interpret by my words because I'm not either saying it right or they just think that I'm like hating on his character but it's like no if you really look at dragon this is what he does he gives people hope he gives people the ability to overturn their kings which then either gives them two options you replace it with a more fair king or they take over and become a worse country it really depends on how it works, right? He has to be in contact with, like, direct people in order to do something about that kingdom now. Will they go back into the hands of somebody that's also as just as corrupt? If not, they'll be a part of the reps. Like, that's the, like you're amassing a world army under the government's nose. That's making him dangerous. That's what makes Dragon one of the most formidable people in the show. He doesn't rule by strength. He rules by numbers. He rules by kingdoms that's affiliated with him. The same way the world government took over the world. Why? Because they own the most kingdoms. They have the most influence. Plus the marines, which he doesn't have. So it's like, think about it from that aspect of why Dragon is strong. Don't Mm -hmm. just say he's top five because who he's related to. I think you should label him top ten maybe. Just because of his position and what he's going to mean later down the line. But right now, what makes him dangerous and the world's most dangerous criminal is the fact that he can do this with countries. And they don't want that. 
I, I agree with you. What I'm saying is for this perspective, right? Because I, I, the way that saying that dragon is like that's where without all information is you're basing it off nothing. But it's like in order to overthrow, like say like a powerful kingdom, you would need to be a strong army yourself, right? Even the like, dragon gets like uh, he has that now, but in the beginning it was just like his small group of freedom fighters. And then it's like the first kingdom, right? Maybe he didn't have Yvonne Klopp or whatever, you know? He would have to fight with that small number of group himself to take over that kingdom, to overthrow that bad king, is what I'm saying, and then gain that kingdom on the side. But originally, you don't have the mass army. Like, he's building and building and building it. But I guess they're playing to, like, for him going after king, going to each kingdom himself and stuff like that and doing it from the beginning, you're going to acquire strength because you're you start off with small group freedom fighters. You don't have all these other people with you. You you don't have all these other strange abilities or other powers. It's just like, I'm going here with my small group and overthrowing this wicked kingdom. And then I'm gaining, after we win the war, I'm gaining this kingdom on my side, you know? So right there is they're playing into like dragon's potential strength. And but I, it also means that there's there's tons of people who just aren't marine, like, like admiral level strength on yeah. these islands. Like that, that's true. That's rare. It doesn't unless that's he's going true. to Yonko Islands, which we know he he's not hasn't done. Yeah, because they haven't said, "Yo, I messed with the revs the other day." Like mm -hmm. we can't give him that credit. Yeah. So it's like, regardless of what you say, that's not where his strength lies. It's it's revolution. Hmm. That's true. I feel like Otis is playing into um, the mysteriousness of Dragon a little more than I guess we would want. Because we already know that Shanks has a mystique about him, like a mysterious dragon even more so, you know? Like, even they they played a little more on it with uh, Ivanka mentioning even the Revs. They know nothing about their leader, you know? they He's so mysterious. So Otis playing that with us. Yeah. I think people should just not get so overhyped on someone. But it's respect awesome. who they are going to be. And respect what they're currently doing. Because I feel like now people are like, yo, he has to be top one. But, like, you're taking away from his actual character. You're taking away from what he actually has in his arsenal. You're saying he's just one-dimensional. He can be three-dimensional. Like, he can be way stronger than we actually think just because he's more of a Yonko than we actually thought. That's the reason why Buggy's a Yonko is his influence. Like, we've said mm -hmm. it all the time. He just lacks the strength. Yeah. But, like, if he has the strength and he has the army and all this other stuff, that's what makes him the most dangerous criminal in the world. Mm -hmm. But it's like, now I'm trying to take out the Celestial Dragons. So it's not literally giving credit to his strength. It's just giving credit to his influence and his ability to do the things that other people can't do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Kaido tried to amass an army through Devil Fruits. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's amassing an army by overturning kingdoms. Mm hmm yeah. No, I, I agree with what you're saying because even Mihawk kind of said it, and it's funny that Mihawk's the one that showed it. He said that uh, Luffy's ability to gain people to his side is one of his most dangerous qualities or attributes, right? And then Ivan Cup says later that Luffy inherited that ability from Dragon. So kind of what you're saying is not necessarily Luffy's strength or Dragon's strength that's gaining people. It's this, it chops it down to them being a conqueror, but you have this way about you that you gain allies to your side. And when you can get people to your side, you have more people fighting for your cause where necessarily you, they could do more for you than you have to use your actual strength because you have numbers or capable people fighting with you. Yeah. All right. You want to get to the Super Chats? Uh, yeah. I don't know if we got a lot. Give me one second. Yeah, guys, if you haven't liked the stream, like the stream. Yeah. Uh, we got $20 from Sabah Shabazz Clark. It says, been watching your old One Piece videos and caught up to the one where Larry cosplays as Buggy. I need to see more cosplays from you guys. <laughs> Question, which One Piece moment truly had you sobbing, if any? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, Marvel. <laughs> um, I, I, don't remember, I don't think I've ever actually cried cried, um, yeah. but the closest I've ever been was seeing Luffy slam his head against the ground after the Straw Hats got separated. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was a good. That idea. was like, because you like, you just you felt for Luffy, bro. Like you yeah, you yeah. felt the the weight of what was happening because you it, more so than ever it was like a, you really can't handle this. Yeah, like you never saw that before. Yeah, I felt anyway. So yeah, I agree. Because also too at that time, that was a time where like, I the spoilers as much as it is now, it wasn't. So you didn't know what was happening to them, you know. And you see Luffy just breaking down like. Because Luffy fully believed that his crew was passing. 
Like, why would he think differently? He you wasn't know? coping well. Let's yeah. say that. Yeah. Mm. Next one. We got another five from Lethal Z97. It says, do y'all play slash collect the One Piece card trading game? Card, uh, trading cards. The Gear 5 Luffy coming out looks fire. Hashtag Buggy Gang. Hashtag Larry has all right takes. We don't uh, collect or play the One Piece card games, but I did go to Mitsui yesterday, and they were having like a convention where they were playing it in the front. It was pretty dope. Yeah, I heard it's getting popular. Yeah, there was a lot of people in there. Yeah. yeah, Mosh is into it. Mosh he, is very into it. He just plays like top 50 in some contest or something like that. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. I should tell him about the one in Edgewater. We got another 15 from Buggy Top 1. Wow. Uh, it says, in the latest episode of the anime, it heavily implies that Law has some sort of connection with the man marked by flames. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Hashtag Buggy Gang. I would have to see it, but... In the, in the manga, they had Law with shadowy eyes and uh, Robin kind of with a curious look, too. I think we spoke on it when in the chapter dropped, but I, I, don't, I don't know that Law has any direct ties. I, I, don't, I don't think I ever got that feel. I'd have to see the anime episode, too, to, to say. Yeah, yeah, I'd have to see I have anime. my own theory, but it doesn't have anything to do with Law, so. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's okay. it. All right. Let's get back into it. So... About two years later, the Revs at Baltigo receive a call from Ginny. She tells them that she's back, and the Celestial Dragons didn't want her. She's sick. She wants to see them, but she can't. It'll be her final goodbye. Kuma's distraught. He wants to see her. She apologizes and says she's about to pass away. She tells Kuma not to look for her. Kuma races out the door and disappears using his devil fruit. Ginny on the phone tells Dragon and Ivankov to take care of Kuma. Then she tells Kuma, meanwhile he just left, to remember she will always, always love him. Kuma appears at Sorbet Kingdom and axes where Ginny is. Kuma goes to the church and sees a fallen Ginny, uh, Ginny. Her face and body turn blue and as hard as stone. Her, expo her exposure to sunlight made it impossible. Kuma then remembers everything they went through and picks her up in his arms. He drops to, his, drops to both of his knees and hugs Ginny close to his chest and starts to cry. The old people of the kingdom say she also had a baby with her. She risked her life for the baby. Kuma kneeling down in front of the cross looks and says, don't worry, Ginny. I'll raise your daughter. He then sits in front of Ginny's grave. What did you guys think about this part of the chapter? And we'll start with Lawrence. Man, uh, it's just so I didn't really want to bring this up, but technically, this is the first account. Like, this is what I'm gonna real quick. This is what I think I called where, like, as soon as I saw um, Wife of Slusher Dragon, I was like, oh snap, Bonnie's a sexual dragon's daughter. Like, it's not Kuma's actual daughter, it's Slusher Dragon before they even showed this part. But now it goes into. Because we always may think it, what the Celestial Dragons are doing with the possible slaves or whatever. I thought it was interesting because we've never seen, well, from my end, I always thought the Celestial Dragons, they marry kind of like, you know, their own kind only. They may take people for whatever their own amusement, but who they were going to marry is only other Celestial Dragons. No, on Sabote, they said uh, that he was going to take her as his bride, the one girl. And the guy was like, hey, no, we just got married. Like, hey, And then he yeah. got shot. Yeah. Okay. Because I always mm -hmm. thought like they want to keep the you know the bloodline pure because mm -hmm. you're kind of making someone, in a way, a celestial dragon. Or, or do they not attain that status when they become your wife? You know? Like, how does that work, really? Probably not. Yeah. But then it goes into, you know, someone forcing themselves on a woman, what the celestial dragons were doing. No. Because, obviously, that's... Beginning. And it goes into, like, now we have uh, more... I guess, wait, why a kind of said what he said, you know? But it goes into, like, if that was your reaction, that's what going into, like, was Guinea, I guess, a, by through marriage, a full-fledged celestial dragon for... Because I'm thinking about, like, Guinea, knowing Guinea, how her strong, bad mouth and how she was, would she wouldn't just go along with this, you know? So I'm thinking a kind of response made it seem like you were part of this family and now you ran away, you know? So it just it, it rose questions for me in that aspect, but um, the situation like it, it got real dark here, and I'm gonna come out. Did you guys want to comment 
Because I know you guys are say, saving it for later. Um, you said the uh, the graphics, the the art. We're saving it for the end of the chapter. End of it. Okay. Yeah, because it's so different from the chapter itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So then, um, and how dark it got um, with this situation, it goes into like Kuma, right? But uh, I have a stuff a little more, so I'm gonna end my turn here, so you guys can go. All right, Seb. All right. So this is the the focal point that I wanted to bring up with Dragon and why I don't know that I can really vibe with him as a character and it's unfair i think it is unfair to him even as a fictional character in the series but the reason why i love one piece so much is because of the lengths luffy is willing to go to for his friends right we see it time and time again what he'll do to make sure that this kind of stuff doesn't happen and dragon is like held back by the revolution where he can't go out and help Ginny, right in this light or at least that's how Oda wants us to view it. But regardless of the revolution, to me, he could have done something. He could have done more. And this was the first time that I ever felt that way about Dragon. You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys have that about Garp and stuff every time. And I'm like, he's tied down by his, 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 his responsibilities, his, belief, his actual beliefs, etc. In Dragon's case, it wasn't a belief system that prevented him from doing anything. It was his own inaction. He could have... Did we just did with Sabo and go to the Mary Jo and, and declare war and do whatever it took to get Ginny back? He chose not to. Whether he would have been successful or not, this is why I love One Piece. Luffy didn't care about the success rate. It didn't. The, the rest of the world doesn't matter. My friend is on the line. I'm going to go out of my way to go make sure that this doesn't happen to her. And Dragon, bogged down by politics, bogged down by the revolution couldn't, and I understand it. But in a fictional world of pirates, where the main character and other great pirates and things like that do these things that I see on panel all the time, it's jarring to me to see Dragon not do it. Especially one chapter after he just told Kuma, "You'll not, you won't regret joining the revolution." Don't tell me that. And then my girl gets kidnapped and sexually assaulted and you did nothing you you did nothing for her that it bothered me so much reading it and i know we said we're going to talk about the the graphics later but it's showing that way where we don't even see her yeah we don't even see her it it made it even that much sadder to me like you start looking at it from like kuma's perspective like that's how i kuma's it's shaking he's shaking it got me really upset. And then, like, the chapter itself, like, the, the her saying, like, hey, I I got back. Like, Kuma realizing she got to um, the Sorbet Kingdom. And she's probably where the, at that place. Before she could even tell him that she loved him, he was gone. So he didn't even hear that. And I'm like, I didn't think Oda could do it again, bro. Yeah. I didn't think he could get sadder. Like, I said it before. Like, we might be getting the saddest backstory, but I didn't believe it for him. You know what I mean? Like, there's just been so many lows for Kuma. Already. Mm-hmm. Already. And he still hasn't made the deal. Like, you get what I'm saying? He still hasn't made whatever deal it is that he needs to make in order to, to become the cyborg and become the Kuma that we saw when we saw him. Um, I know what I'm about Dragon. I, I understand that. I just, it's hard for me to like him as a character right now. Based off what happened. I know it's not fair, but it's just where I'm at. Um, as far as the rest of it, I thought it was poetic for them to get back to the the church yeah. where they used to live and where he used to take the pain and stuff. This is the probably the most hurt he's ever been right now. Feeling no actual physical pain. Yeah. He would trade every single one of those uh, nothing happens for, for this not to have happened. And you can see that in his face. You can see it in the in the stoic face he has at the tombstone. And for Bonnie to be this, I don't think anybody had that as their like uh, their guess per se. Maybe somebody did. I didn't see it online. It it, it didn't come as a shock because I understood like this was a possibility, I guess. But like I didn't want it. Mm-hmm. I think a part of me deep down was like, I hope that it just works out and it's still just Kuma's baby. Yeah. But like. This is what it is. This is the Celestial Dragon. This is why Dragon's fighting this war. But I just, I wish he did more. This was the first time his inaction ever actually bothered me. 
on battle. But that's it for me. Yeah, no, I think it was well said. I think on both parts. Um, what can I say, man? I mean, the, it, this was a very hard part of the story to digest. I think for everybody. Um, I could imagine for some women too that happen to experience sexual violence, even in you know homes or like whatever. Like that has to be tough to even just read. So for Oda to go this dark and this deep sounds, you know, it's like he's hitting a new storytelling strength that he just hasn't been able to exploit until right now because mm -hmm. he's just been saving it. You know, we've gotten dark times before, but I don't think those dark times hit us as much because they happen so fast. Meanwhile, this just keeps going. And for me, when I read this, a lot of people are blaming Dragon and a lot of people are blaming Kuma for not doing something. And I think, like Sebastian said, it's kind of unfair to put that onto Dragon, but at the same time, I share roughly the same beliefs. If I feel the way I feel about Garp, I got to hold Dragon to that same standard. You know, I think what makes Luffy the best out of the monkeys are going to be his best qualities. And that's his carelessness, his recklessness, but also his impulsiveness to do whatever the hell he wants when he wants. And because we're not big fans of the One Piece being friendship, mm -hmm. we like that the friendship aspect is always displayed through Luffy and going after people the way he wants to because he loves them, right? And the fact that Dragon doesn't do that rubbed me the wrong way. It made me think of him in a way where I was just like, how, how can I put this? I saw Fisher Tiger uh, go to Mary Joa and release slaves. Perfectly fine. Came back after he was captured, but he, he escaped. Doesn't show it's that hard because Fisher Tiger really wasn't that strong. Then we seen the revolutionaries literally go to Mary Joa and sneak in and, and do everything that they did and still walk away. So for me to believe the most capable man, the most connected in the world man, the, the, the guy that like is a CIA mastermind to a degree where he could just send agents to different parts of the world and they come back unscathed because they're, they're either in it already or like they, he has a system that allows him to infiltrate governments and dissect them and then go, okay, let's take that information. Let's see what we can do. I feel like if anybody was to do that, it would be Dragon. Right. And, and, and I don't want to cut you off, but my, my biggest issue is people were pushing back about like, oh, they don't know where they are. You know where the Celestial Dragons live, bro. Yes. yes. You know where they are. They're at Mary Jo. Mm -hmm. That's where they are. If you need a means to get there, concoct a plan. Figure it out. But I don't, again, I don't want to harp too much on that, but that, that part of it has always... We didn't know where she was. You know, bro. Yeah. You know. They stay where they're at 90% mm -hmm. of the time. Yeah. And then you have Kuma who can teleport anywhere, anyway, if you find the information. So... Exactly. They, they should have went, bro. He should have went. So I think that people just saying, like, what could Dragon have done? I just feel like there's so much, bro. He could have done a lot. And he just didn't. And a lot of people are like, well, if he does that, then, like, something bad can happen and his whole plan goes to foil. The That's why, like, it's a revolution. Like, they're going to have somebody that comes up after him and takes over and takes charge. But the thing is, if you're considering Dragon top five, top ten strength-wise then why does that matter? Shouldn't he just be able to walk in and walk back out with her and just take Kuma and say, yo, let's go back to Baltigo? Yo, like, even if you can't, like, you could be that martyr for exactly. the next person. Have Kuma become the... Like, it does, like, you don't need to be the guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, why, why does he feel that he needs to survive? And, like, bro, go... I don't know. It, it bothered me enough. Like... We got Moria spinning the block for Absalom, bro. Yep. Dolo on a Yonko's crew. Mm -hmm. But Dragon can't go after Ginny, bro. Exactly. I don't know, man. I just, it rubbed me the wrong way. For That's real, for great. real. I really don't like that guy. So I, I think that it's justifiable. It's justifiable to be like, yo, Dragon, like, why? Like, people, you shouldn't be like, yo, because I like Dragon so much and I see him in this particular light that I have to plat pass the blame on Takuma. <laughs> And that's what I see fans doing. That's what I see people doing. They're literally like, well, why didn't Kuma do it? 
Why do we got to say why didn't Kuma do it if he's not the head of the organization? Just because that's his longtime best friend? Why can I not say that? Why couldn't do it? Kuma do it, and why couldn't Dragon do it? Like, is it that hard? Is it that much of a mental toll on you to be like, well, Dragon could have done something? <laughs> like, why is he that favorited when you have no reason to be like in, in 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 that type of mindset for him? He's never given you anything. Clearly, Dragon hasn't even said much of a sentence, and most of the time he's been on panels. But they have such strong love for all these vague characters, bro. And I'll never get it. I'll never get how they could be like, yo, I love that guy just because I think he's going to do something. <laughs> well, your boy had a couple times to do something. And he hasn't done anything. So what are we doing? I feel bad for Kuma, man. Yeah. I feel bad for Kuma. I feel bad that he keeps getting the short end of the stick. It really hit me hard when, like, he couldn't even hear the words, I love you, from Jenny. He raced to the church. He she he knew she was going to be there to find her like that and still pick her up, grab her, put him to, like, regardless if he was going to die from the disease, he still picked her up, put him to his chest, like, and he just started bawling. And then, you know, you, he, he stands in front of the cross, you know? It's like, a, it's like this very... It's like a it's like a message that that Oda's like, yo, have faith. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like when like when all things fail in your life, have faith in God. Like have faith in in the ability that you'll get through the tough times, that He's with you and stuff like that, right? And it's like Kuma's once again portraying have faith. Like even when all things fail and all things seem miserable, mm -hmm. have faith in Him, but also have faith in yourself. And it's really poetic. To see that he's in the church again, where they first were. I, I had another thing to say that with, with the church. She wanted to get married. Yeah. They end up together at the basically the altar of a church mm -hmm. with the sunlight shining in. And another thing I saw in the community floating around is the symbol, like the symbolism uh -huh. of the fact that like they pray. Like he wants to emulate the sun god Nika, and it's the sun god, and like the sun is what took Jenny away mm. and it's like it's bringing him to his darkest time and i'm like oh in his bag like as mad as i was reading this chapter he really in his bag right yeah he was like, great this is, this, this is, is great writing this oh, is... before you say something lawrence i do want to say the cross too nurtaku pointed it out that mm -hmm. the the cross looks like the sun mm -hmm. and the the symbols that they use um in the kozuki and several other like i think wano has the same symbol with the rotating uh circles around it mm -hmm. so and then it looks like kuma's paw print mm-hmm like one third of it. I was gonna add to something like that a little later, but yeah. But what I was gonna say is, um, one I believe is not the the blame shouldn't fall all on Dragon. It shouldn't fall all on Kuma. Honestly, because y'all also forgetting Ivankov. That's her brother. All three of them should have went. Dragon as their leader, Kuma as your lover, best friend, and Ivankov as your sister, as the brother. All three yeah. you should have went. And that's where it goes into, um, like you said, you brought up the parallels between Dragon and Garp, where, like, they're thinking heavily about their responsibility and the situation they're in. Should they, What should they do, right? And the same thing, they both chose their responsibility over their, uh, their comrade or, like, you know, family or something like that, right? And that's where, and I, and I kind of play into, like, have you noticed, right? I mean, of course you noticed it. That Luffy, anyway, Oda shows heavy that Luffy's an idiot, right? And there goes into reason because, like, Luffy, as the idiot, he's not going to think about his responsibility. Luffy's not going to think, on, oh, I have to achieve my dream of becoming the Pirate King, and then my, go my goal after that because I'm gonna, it's going to change the world. It's going to affect the world. All, all my things, no. Because if you notice, every time Luffy wants to save his comrade, like, let's go Sanji for this situation. When he wanted to save Sanji or get Sanji back, right? And when he got captured, remember when his hands were, like, pinned up in the book? Luffy was willing to rip off his arms to get out of there to go meet Sanji, right? Showing that what Luffy's willing to sacrifice, even when it's Ace, Ace is captured, right? He says, I'm going to save you, Ace, even if it ends me. Again, Luffy's willing to give up anything to save or free his Nakama. And that's why, he, anyway, showing I guess what he represents as the warrior of liberation, because he would sacrifice his arms, his legs, himself, everything, 
to save his Nakama, right? Showing the difference. And I think Oda plays into, like, heavy that Luffy's the idiot aspect, as in he's not going to think deeply about it. It's more like, this is what I want to do. This is what I feel is right. This is what I should do because my comrade, my Nakama needs me. I don't need to think heavy about all the other situations. This is the what's important to me right now, right? So it's like uh, I think Oda plays into like where you have more like the Garp and Dragon, the deep thinkers. They're thinking how they're all weighing the pros and cons and everything. Where Luffy, it's simple. No, my Nakama needs me, and this is what I got to do to save them, regardless of how it affects me. That's what I'm gonna do. So I I think that Oda plays into that writing a lot. The thing is too, it's like it's it's gonna be interesting with Dragon because. He most likely became a revolutionary because of the inaction that Garp took. But it's going to be super interesting when we find out that he's just Garp, but on the revolutionaries. He became exactly what he hated most. So, again, I don't think Dragon is a fraud. I don't think Garp is a fraud. I just think that they're both cowards. You might say that Luffy wouldn't have... Like, Luffy wanted to go save Vivi. And Zoro was like, yo, chill out. You can't do that. You can't just go to Mary Joa and like go save Vivi. Remember what you said about Ace, that Ace can he he chooses to do what he wants with his life. He has his own adventures. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna have his own adventures. But only when it's undeniable danger, that's when you should choose to do something. Right? And a lot of people like to use that too, like that panel, as a way to say, well, Luffy decided not to go after Vivi. And it's like, no, that's not what that panel said. That panel actually said that Luffy, from the jump, was willing to go after and save Vivi, mm-hmm. but didn't because he remembered she's probably not in danger. Exactly. We don't yeah. know if she's in danger. Yeah. We know she can handle herself. And also, they went there as a reverie. It wasn't like she got kidnapped and was made to be somebody's wife, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that was against Ginny's choice. This is a Vivi's choice. Like, she went there willingly. So... Yes, they don't know where she's at. That's also the case. Yeah. But mm-hmm. they knew where Jenny was. They knew yeah. Jenny was taken by force. And the thing is, again, if you keep saying it's Ivankov's fault, you keep saying it's Kuma's fault, at the end of the day, it's still Dragon's fault. He's like, the leader, bro. He's the leader he's of the, the Reds. If he tells them to do something, they'll do it, period. Exactly. All three of them should have went. All three, them, all three of them should have went. That's completely fine with me. Yeah. But it, again... That does not shift the blame. That only makes it more intense on Dragon's end because he's the leader of these two. He knows that this could break the morale of the revolutionaries. Why? Ginny was the most liked commander from what we saw. saw. They adored her. And they adored the relationship she had for Kuma, like the the perspective on Kuma. Mm -hmm. So not only do they, they lose that aspect of the revolutionaries, now your commanders are in shambles. So it's like, what's the best thing to do to boost morale? Go after your per- your, your person. Why not? Mm-hmm. J- just yeah. because you're afraid, like, son, like, bro, I, like, I'm how a, many times have I'm, people gone there? I'm gonna be honest. I understand him not going. I'm saying it's why I don't vibe with him as a character right now. I get it. Like I said, I'm being unfair, but I under like understand me. You can't expect me to vibe with you as a character when this happened. Exactly. And you didn't do anything. Exactly. That's where I'm at, bro. It's just where I'm at. But you know what it is, too? I think psychologically, it's more like Oda conditioned us with Luffy. Like, Oda conditioned us to think that as long as you have the Luffy aspect, you can accomplish anything. So if Luffy's out here just going after his friends, we we went through a whole cake with Sanji. We went through Ennis Lobby with Robin. We went through Water 7 with Usopp. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's always been a time, even when Luffy was, like, trying to recruit people, he always went the extra route to recruit them or to have them on his side. Like, even with Jinbei, yo, you better come back. He's always conditioned us to think Nakama are everything. So it's normal for his 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 general fans and audience to think, damn, Dragon didn't go after, bon- like, Ginny. Like, that that sucks. Like, I, I can't really vibe with that. Why? Because... That's not what. That's not One Piece. That's, that's not, not one what. Piece. That's not the story I read. But hey, if y'all still vibe with Dragon, but it's also trying to show. To remember though, that's why Luffy's the different one. Exactly, Luffy. Yeah, but don't then don't give me yo. He's Luffy's dad. Then don't give me that. <laughs> don't give me that. You can't be just. You his like dad him, in, in blood only, bro. You ain't acting like him. He ain't, he ain't get that from you. Yeah, I. So 
I think I think overall though, I think people are so This is what I'd be saying about the One Piece community sometimes that they get so attached to a character that they just think that that character can have no fault. They literally think that if you say something that slightly makes that character not as great in their mind, it breaks the whole glass shop that they've <laughs> built. Like the bull just starts running. Like you can't say anything bad about Mihawk. You can't say anything bad about Blackbeard. You can't say anything bad about Dragon. You can't say anything bad about Emu. If you say something that's terrible about Garp, you're an idiot. But it's like, well, we're, we're digesting the story. We're seeing people for what they are. And you're telling us just because we think that way that you think this is terrible of us to think. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, look at yourself. Like, reflect. Like, ask yourself, do you look at these people like celebrities? Do you look at them as gods or do you look at them as, like, actual people? Mm-hmm. Are, are you more of the belief of believing in word and narrative or do you believe in feats and narrative? Because there's there's different ways of believing in characters. This happened with Kid. You believed he was supposed to be something bigger than he was, and look it, he got one shot. <laughs> and I'm not saying that to dis, dis yeah. you know, disregard Those Kid. Effects. But it was the fact that he didn't show what he needed to show in order to further his prior career. You believed otherwise because you had this huge fanism about him. Get rid of that aspect of your personality. Like get rid of that aspect of what you like about like just manga in general. Just see the person for what they are. I mean they don't have to. They don't have what, to. They just gonna butt heads with you but, and me at times. Yo, but that that's what makes them feel like what we say when it does come to light, because a lot of the stuff we do say comes to light. They're like, yo, you can't say that, bro. You can't say that, bro. I I hate you, bro. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Hmm. But I think I think Sebastian killed it with with what he was saying, though. Yeah, I think he was like, I couldn't have said it better. Hey, Amen. Oh, like you said, you said it. He's not a fraud. He's conditioned us to respect elements of people's character. Mm-hmm. That willingness to do anything for your friends is one of those it's again it's the reason why I love One Piece yeah it is when people ask me what the best arcs of One Piece I say Andy's Lobby Sabote Archipelago Marine Ford why mm. the the friendship aspect and, and Alabasta that's my like my fourth right mm. why the friendship and what people were willing to do for their friends in those arcs what they had to go through because of what they had, like what their friends went through because of what they did in those arcs is why mm-hmm. that's One Piece Dragon out here acting like a not One Piece character it's the reason why people love Roger, too. Yeah. That was the one but thing about Roger. That's why they pirate to hear revolutionary, bro. And then he going to need a pirate true, true, true. to actually I, I, win his revolution true, for him. Because he ain't about to do it, true. Lawrence. I can't have you do He ain't rest. about to do it. I you sure rest, about bro. that? That's why Sabo you is the sure real face that? right that's now, why? bro. You know what's funny? <laughs> I'm on that type of time right now, bro. I don't <laughs> so that, care. Sebastian acted like me like, now, like a bro. month or two ago. <laughs> You know what it is, Lawrence? You know what it is? I know we're like lingering on this thing because it's it's honestly interesting. Yo, it's funny how like I called the Garp thing about him being like a little a little coward and now people are switching up. And I said for the longest that Dragon was like not doing his thing. And now look at it. It switched up again, right? (laughs) All I'm saying is, yo, I caught a couple dubs, man. And it's not the best dubs. It's not (laughs) W's I'm proud of. I'm not. I'm not proud of it. I don't like Dragon, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It's, it's a, we, we're here. Emotion. No, I, like I don't like that. You don't like, you don't like Dragon now? No. I never. I was always like, whatever. We we gonna see. Damn. I've waited enough. Yo, I've been disappointed. Lawrence, enough, you remember bro. when he had him like top four? Oh, he's or still top. Like that? See, no, I still think he's yeah, top ten. Is yeah. I still think he's top. He, nah, what you? It's what why you, I still no, don't like you, him. What you? What did you say though? You said, did he say like top four or something like that? Like it was like third when we made the top 50 list or something? He's still probably top three <laughs> right now. It's, it's another reason why I don't like him. Why are you top three? You ain't do nothing. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this. I'll, I'll, I'll say something that I agree heavily with Lawrence too because I know he thinks the same way. If you acting like this, your cockers, <laughs> your cockers ain't up there, dog. I'm sorry. And I know Lawrence th- thought the same thing for a minute, too. When he was looking at Drake, he was like, yo, maybe his cocker is lacking a little bit. Yeah, he can have some of the same traits as Luffy, but like, yo, that ain't that ain't top conquerors, dog. Like, like, 
Yo, Roger wasn't doing that, yeah, dog. Really. Like, Luffy not doing that. that like, you, these are the top-tier Conqueror hockey users, bro. Y'all, y'all they can, wasn't having that, dog. Y'all can like Dragon all y'all want, bro. <laughs> That's for y'all. That's y'all, man, bro. bro. Me and Lionel... He, he's strong, though. I still think he's top five. Yeah, I think he's strong. He's, I strong. Think he's strong. He weak, though. But he weak. <laughs> hey. 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 I will mention, this is going to give me a lot of heat. Give me a lot of heat. Right? Because we're talking about Conquerors and everything. Do y'all have the same attitude with Whitebeard and Odin and Kaido? Because that's nah, a yeah, nah, Whitebeard, boy. White, no, 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 no. Whitebeard's different. different because man. Whitebeard didn't know that that happened. He just didn't spin the block after it happened. It's not the same. So it's different. If he knew that that was going to happen, like if he knew that Odin got captured and was being bought, he'd go over there. Odin was not a white beard pirate when that stuff went down. <laughs> you, that's true he too. was not. That's that true man, too. Oh, no, like, that's he true, asked white beard should... to leave and left of his own accord. He's a grown man. That man spent a year plus on another man's pirate oh, okay. crew and is a Roger pirate. Mm-hmm. But you, I'm last saying, no, that no, I no, checked. No, that, no, that's true. He's affiliated but, with both. Would that would that matter to Luffy? Well, Luffy did it for all of them, but. No, but the, but it's again, still even the difference is like Marco wanted to go, right? Plus, Odin should have handled that. Marco wanted to. <laughs> he made mistakes. Yeah, he made, he mistakes. made mistakes. But Marco wanted to go, right? But he even said, like, yo, that didn't happen. Like, we didn't know about it until it happened, like, probably, like, what What was it, like, months later or something like that? You could be like, yo, I'm going to spend a block on Kaido. Like, that's cool, I guess. But that still wouldn't have done anything for Odin. Yeah, no, it wouldn't have. Because I don't think the Ace wanted to go, right? And he was going to go, and then White Bear stopped the Ace. Yeah. Right? It was just like, yo, what, what am I supposed to do if the person's already gone? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Dragon so, ain't no white beard, bro. Dragon ain't no white beard, bro. Anyway. <laughs> what you want to do, man? We got two more questions. All right. We All, right. Got... All right. Yeah, yeah. Let's just get through the questions real quick. Uh-huh. Yeah. Guys, we'll get to Super Chats. Just give us a second. All right. Uh, like the video if you haven't liked the video and leave if you don't like our dragon takes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we head back to the church and there's a ruckus. The people are telling Kuma he's drowning Bonnie in milk. They even say he needs an iron cage so he doesn't roll over on her. Bonnie clearly has Ginny's appetite too. Kuma smiles at the thought of it. Some time passes and Bonnie calls Kuma daddy. Uh, don't clip that. <laughs> he immediately starts crying. More time passes and Bonnie's wearing a dress. Kuma cries again. Uh, Bonnie is the wonder of the town. Kuma goes back to being a revolutionary and looks at Bonnie uh, simultaneously. He also gets that iron cage for when he sleeps. Sabo is shown to be training with Kuma. Then Kuma's childhood friends ask why he's boarded up the windows of the church. Kuma tells them to shut the door and shows Bonnie's eye. It's a blue stone. They immediately call the doctor. One doctor wants to put her in sunlight again. The other says it's not white lead disease. Kuma then tells Dragon and Ivankov he's quitting the Marines because Bonnie caught the same disease as Ginny. He doesn't know what to do, but he just wants to be with her. Dragon tells him to live with no regrets, and they contact every doctor in the world. Kuma appreciates it. What did you guys think about this chapter? And we'll start with Seb. It was really heartwarming, honestly. Um, I know I make a lot of jokes about having to raise kids and stuff, um, but, like, shout out to Kuma for stepping up and being the dad that Bonnie obviously needed. Like, who else was going to handle that? Who else was going to do that? He said he would raise uh, Bonnie. He said he would raise Jenny's daughter, and he's doing so. Um, it was really heartwarming. Like, the crying, her being, you know, in the dress. I see him still fighting. I was a little surprised by that. I thought he was, like, going to be done for some reason when I was reading it. But I was like, mm-hmm. I realized, like, Kuma was still a revolutionary during this time. So I don't know why I thought he was going to be done. Um, the case thing just looked crazy to me. Yeah. Like, it just looks crazy. It's funny though. <laughs> it's so He's funny. such a big dude. He's huge. <laughs> um, but the 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 grayscale or bluestone, my fault. Oh, the again. Um, <laughs> well, he's a fan of I, yeah, Game no, of Thrones. It's, it's hey. funny. Yeah. Um, but it's her having it like in that spot where she has the the like eye ring thing that she has. Yeah. Um, and they touch more on that a little later in this chapter, it seems. But I was like, okay, like that's interesting, right? Like. Does it spread further? Do we get to a point where it's like covering her entire face? Yeah. You know? Um, and then them reaching out to the doctors. Thanks, Dragon. Appreciate that, bro. <laughs> Did all you could, I guess, for Bonnie. 
That's all I got. <laughs> He's just doing huh? it. <laughs> uh, Law. Oh cool. uh, yeah, actually, uh, this one and the next one, I have more of my uh, what I want to let out because I have a few things I want to say in here. But like, honestly, uh, dope uh, Kuma's character, but it's like it's Kuma. Of course, he's gonna like you know take care of um, Bonnie, Guinea's uh, daughter, right? And then seeing him just reminds you of like doing all this, taking care of a kid, then going back to war. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna tap on a little bit of this more later about again Kuma how he's living his life, right? How it's completely in service for other people, right? He's living his life to take care of this little girl and also living his life as a rev where you're fighting for other people. Mm-hmm. So it's like how living service, and I'm attacked into that a little later on. And um, it's just seeing him going back and forth, like using his probably ability to tap, uh, to teleport here and there as fast as he can to fight in the war, then take care of the daughter. And um, seeing that's why I actually, like, uh, like you, I was going to bring up too the little mark on Bonnie's face. Like, mm-hmm. that's just great riding my order. You had that from Glenn when we first here, right? And going into here, this is what bothered me about the dragon thing. When he says, very well, live with no regrets. That triggered me. I was just like, yo, bro. I was going to say it too, but I was like, I don't want to keep harping on it, bro. I was just like, yo. I might swing on you. Yeah. Say something like that to yo, me, bro. I, I was like, wow. How, yo. You, how would you say that in this situation? Bro, when he said that, I was like, so you don't, do you not regret He's that? tone deaf, bro. Oh, that's that's what I'm learning. That, He's tone deaf, bro. That got me. Damn. But yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to stop here because time-wise and also I want to tack on the beginning part and then how Kuma's living for himself to like what kind of like a mini theory of what I got later on. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's funny that Dragon said that, but like he clearly didn't regret leaving Luffy. (laughs) You can still be out if you want. He said, yo, you worried about her? Yo, live your life with no regrets, yo. Join the res. This is why we didn't. Go after Ginny, bro. <laughs> There'll be more Ginnies, bro. There'll be more, bro. You could raise another kid. That's not your own. Oh, oh you doing man. that already? Oh, damn it. <laughs> no regrets. Yeah. Bro. Dude, this is why, like, I have it, like... All right. <laughs> anyway. Let's get to the last question, and then we'll take super chats, and then uh, we we'll, do sponsor, we'll do sponsor, take super chats, and then we'll go into phone calls. All right, like the video if you haven't, and join the Discord if you haven't. All right, guys. Finally, we see Bonnie at the age of five, which was seven years ago. Official age confirmed. Children are running away from what they call a vampire. Bonnie is shown in full glory, sticking up her middle finger at them. They tease her with a cross. And she fly kicks them in the face. That was funny to me. The bullies run away. Kuma says he gets nervous when she goes towards the doorway. Bonnie basically tells him to chill. She'll never make him sad. Kuma starts to cry, and she calls him a crybaby. Bonnie says the bullies made fun of her face. She knows it's a disease, and she can't help it. Kuma then, with a creepy face, says, (laughs) What, your jewels? And then Bonnie yikes. Uh, he says it makes her beautiful. Bonnie says she loves them. Kuma asks Bonnie where she wants to go for a trip, and she says a sky island. Then maybe Nika is there, too. Kuma immediately breaks into a dance and starts to do the Joy Boy rhythm. Kuma says, okay, once she turns 20, Bonnie says her 19th birthday, she wants to go to Fishman Island. A doctor late at night tells Kuma that Bonnie has sapphire scales, which is incurable. Uh, during sunlight, exposure to sunlight, and even moonlight helps it spread. But even if it's not exposed to those lights, she only has five years left to live. Kuma is heartbroken. Bonnie overheard some of the conversation and asks, what was they talking about, about age 10? Kuma tries to act oblivious and makes up a lie. He tells her she'll get better at age 10. Bonnie, from excitement, screams that they can go around the world at that age. One year later, King Bakori is attacking everyone again. He wants to get rid of the people weighing down this country. He's slaughtering folks in the street. So, what did you guys think about the end of this chapter, starting with Seb? It was dope to see Bonnie. Um, It was. Like, I know, like, a lot of this backstory has been Kuma-focused. It's good to see the Bonnie part start to get, you know, driven in. Um... I also really laughed at the kick. Yeah. I did. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was funny as hell. It reminded me of uh, 
Crow isn't worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she just looks like one of those characters. Um, I thought it was dope, Kuma's interaction with her. And, like, the, the face he made. Like, what, your jewels? I thought that was really funny. Um, him, like, encouraging her to, to not be, you know, insecure about them. Mm. And saying that they're beautiful and everything. Like, I thought that was really great. Him talking to her about the Sky Island, where she wants to go. Like, it, it just it brought back that, if you could go anywhere, where would you go? Right? Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. so, like, in my head... I thought back to him saying that to um, what's her face? What is her name, bro? I can't stand her. The the, Perona. Yeah, there you Perona. Go. And I was like, yeah, Perona has pink hair. You think he like thought of Bonnie? Probably. Yeah. But uh, another thing about this is that Kuma's a, a real accurate dad. Mm-hmm. He is, because. People be lying to their kids, bro. <laughs> I can't. It's true. They do. I was saying that he didn't tell a white lie. He, to- he told a blue lie. <laughs> <laughs> a blue so, lie? Yeah. That's in a blue scale. Blue scale. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yo, they be lying to their kids, bro. Sometimes you have to to keep uh, everything on an even keel. Um, the doctor looked like Fujitora to me. I don't know if y'all saw that. Yeah, but a little bit. <laughs> I like that he was teaching her about Nika, so we know where she's getting that like information from, really firsthand. Um, and him lying about the whole like at this time we're gonna go do something. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the focal point. Like he's gonna have to make some sort of decision by that time so that she could be free or be scaleless. Mm. Um, and then the, the ending of the chapter, I just didn't expect. I thought the ending could have and easily should have been the. Uh, the lie that he told, and like to be continued. Yeah, I didn't expect the cliffhanger with the the flames and the town burning and all that. So something about that happened right now. What it is, can't call. It, but that's it. All right, law. Yeah. So um, just real quick, because we finally get Bonnie's age, and now it makes sense. We're going. I think we saw actually Bonnie's real form. Remember when uh, Zoro was about to cut the celestial dragon, and she tackles mm-hmm. Zoro, right? Just as a kid, but if you look at her, she doesn't look like a little little kid. She looks around the age of a twelve year old, right? Which is her age. So I'm thinking that's probably Bonnie's real form there, what we saw there. And um, what I want to add to Kuma, right? Is that, and also this is also where we get uh, why Bonnie's called Jewelry Bonnie. She got the name from here, your jewels, Kuma. I thought that was pretty cool. And um, Kuma here, yeah. I also want to add. Bonnie also knows of Nika. I think it's going to play around when she finds out that Lufa, Lu, Lufa, wow, Luffy is Nika or, you know, they're right there. And I want, this is where I want to tap into, like, for example, I thought it was interesting about, because, you know, she's, she's reading that book about the places. Mm-hmm. If you check the words on it, it looks like it's saying the Bible, right, that Kuma always carries around. But she's saying that this place, like, she read it in this, this, uh, this book, right? It looks like it might be saying the Bible, whatever. And then she mentions Nika. And then you have Kuma always reading that book and then how their family, right, uh, either read, uh, knows about Nika in the past and also they're kind of like churchgoers. And then now you have that cross with symbols the sun in it. To me, and then she says, Sky Islands, maybe we'll see Nika there. So it makes me tell me that this book that they're reading the Bible in One Piece World, Nika's the god of that of their Bible there. Mm-hmm. That's what I understood from that. Niga is in this book, and he's represented as a God figure, or maybe like even representing like kind of like like Jesus or God. But that's who Niga kind of like represents because the cross has the sun. Niga's known as the sun god, right? And they're reading the book where she referenced the sky and Niga in it in that book while she's reading it, and says maybe we'll see Niga there if you travel to a sky island, right? So that makes me tell that Niga is a a literal God type where has his own Bible figure in the One Piece world. So I don't know if he's going to be, how old is going to go about that, but that's what it looks like what I understood. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Yeah. Um, and also, too, what I wanted to add now, uh, with Kuma's uh, always living for other people, right? Hence, and again, like he's uh, family pastors, goes to church. Living for other people is like basically their ML, right? So this is my theory, right? I believe I understand what Kuma's sacrifice was. Right, Ten, five years. Right, she's supposed to die, or I'm sorry, pass, whatever, through the blue scale. I believe Kuma's sacrifice is he hears a Vegapunk and offers his life to cure Bonnie. Right, 
So in order to offer his life, as in he'll commit himself to the uh, such action for some type of testing or whatever, or becomes the weapon to save Bonnie's life as um, th- from the uh, the sapphire scale. Yeah. Yeah, sapphire scale. And that's, I believe, why Bonnie kind of accepted it, because, like, this sacrifice, because we see Bonnie having the attitude towards not only Vegapunk, but also, like, my dad wouldn't do that, right? But now you see the sacrifice that that he offered himself up to save her, and who would be able to cure Bonnie besides Vegapunk, right? Chopper. So, <laughs> maybe Korea, right maybe so i believe mom. that's the sacrifice he made that bonnie found out that memory and of course kuma wouldn't want bonnie to find out about this because he wouldn't want her like oh he sacrificed this the the reason why he's this um cyborg or this person where he has no mind will or no person right uh is because to cure her because she had she's going to find out that it wasn't curable that she was going to pass but kuma gave his life in order to get the operation or whatever the medical things from the greatest scientist and doctor in the world, Vega Buck. But ultimately, that you become the human weapon that he is for the Marines. Because that's the only way I would believe, showing that, like, how great Kuma is in that aspect is because always living for other people. But it shows that his love for Guinea and Bonnie overshadowed his hate and resentment towards the world government because he gave himself over to them to save. Bonnie, who had like no hope, mm. so showing Kuma's character, his love for Guinea and Bonnie, stay strong. With this where we're like, I'm willing to give myself up to this ultimate enemy here to save the girl, or the daughter of the girl that I love, right? Showing how great of a character Kuma is, always living for other people as a revs, as taking her like that shows all together like Kuma's personality. That's what I think is the the sacrifice that Kuma made is to cure Bonnie by handing himself over, and I also believe that. Um, Two more things that uh, Kuma, what he's trying to do, he, what if he's trying to kamikaze? <laughs> like, you know, like just go to Mary Joe and just like blow himself up and take out the, uh, the thing, like using what they turn me into against you. Like, you know, you turn me into a weapon, I'm going to use my weapon and blowing up myself up and taking out Mary Joe. And I also believe at the end of it is where Kuma becomes the king of Sorbet. He takes out this king and becomes the king, and then eventually the world government paints him as his, uh, the tyrant king. Yeah. Um,. For me, when I thought about being a dad, like, mm-hmm. like man, like, I want to be a pops one day so bad. Just because, like, that's always been, like, something I've wanted personally. So just seeing Kuma do the things that he does for, like, Bonnie was really nice. Like, it was nice to see. It was nice to imagine. And it's, like, especially with, like, guys having, like, daughters you're just like a different type of soft because it's mm-hmm. your daughter. Like you, you just like super overprotective, and you know, like your sons are always gonna be like crazy nuts, right? But like <laughs> it's your daughters that you're truly like, yo, I'll fight the world for. Mm-hmm. So just realizing and also agreeing with your thought process, I had the same. I literally thought that he gave his body up, uh, made a deal with Vegapunk, and Vegapunk said we could cure her, but you have to do this. And he was like, no matter what, do it. Mm-hmm. Um, he was willing to leave the Revolutionary Army for Bonnie, so why wouldn't he go even further for Bonnie? Um, it does show, a li- and I, I don't want to go back to like the dragon slandering, that because I know everybody's going to just call it slandering instead of actual <laughs> truth. It seems like Dragon doesn't know what's going on, once again, regarding like what he saw at... Uh, Maddie Joa when Kuma was a slave and stuff like that. But it also shows that I think Dragon doesn't know necessarily what happened with Kuma and Bonnie. I think Kuma might have gone out of his way without telling Dragon, like, yo, I'm doing this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that might have happened. I'm not saying it did. I'm saying it might have happened. And, you know, that's also the reason why Vegapunk was promised by Kuma not to tell Bonnie the truth because he was still trying to hold that blue lie. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, but I, I thought it was incredibly sad, man, because, you know, you know, me and Seb, we used to work at Best Buy for the St. Jude's uh, yeah, for children donations. And just just having, I can't imagine, bro, like as a parent, to, to have the, a little you Mm. like 
not be able to live past 10. Like, imagine a little you. Like, yo, you're my brothers. I would, even if your kid was like that, I would be distraught because that's fam to me. So that's like, like, damn, like, my kid won't be able to live till 10. And then you have to lie to her because she's so smart. She's so gifted. She's mm-hmm. so strength oriented that she overheard the conversation. And now she's like, yo, what did you say? And now you have to lie to your kid knowing that there might not be a cure, knowing that you're probably going to have to bury your mm-hmm. kid. Like, I, I can't imagine that as a parent, dog. Like, I can't. Like, I know people, like, parents get crazy over, like, the school system forcing ideologies upon their kids when they want to teach their kids. So they get, like, this extra, like, you see this little baby mm-hmm. grow into this person, and you see how many times Kuma has cried over her, like, her little accomplishments, like wearing a dress yes. or mm-hmm. holding her bottle and, you know, being so scared for her to even leave the church. She can't leave the church, and she knows that he cries. She knows how emotional he is about her. And you have to lie to that same that same kid. <sighs> bro, I'll tell you the truth, man. Oda. In his bag, bro. Oda was, Oda was messing me up, bro. So it's, it's really sad. I don't know what's going to happen next chapter. I do think what Lauren says is going to be true. Like, he does become king. Um, but... It's going to be interesting moving forward. I think it's going to be real interesting. I just, I just, whatever, I just hope that Oda, through all the trials and, and, and sadness that Kuma experienced in his life, he gives him the ultimate happy ending. I, I, I hope he doesn't like he, like, I hope he doesn't, yeah, like, I just hope he gives him a happy ending. Like, like for a second, Kuma comes back. And something good happens in his life. And then he fades away. Like, I wouldn't be mad if he passed away, but at least something good happened. I think so long as he passes away protecting Bonnie, it'll be poetic, symbolic, and something that Kuma would be happy doing. He wouldn't have an issue doing it. It might break Bonnie, but, like, he wouldn't mind. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. You know, she couldn't live past 10. Bonnie ate the age, age fruit or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. He gets to see Bonnie all grown up. Mm-hmm. That would be cool too. Because I don't think he's seen Bonnie he, really he probably since probably has then. Yo, she's the youngest, uh, youngest supernova too, by she, far. She's yeah. twelve. There's nobody That's in history crazy. who has ever been twelve <laughs> yeah, and has been a supernova. No. So, all right, Marv, let's hit uh, the sponsorship, and then guys, we'll be right back. Please like the video. This episode is sponsored by Better Help. Have you been struggling lately? Maybe having difficulty sleeping, struggling with their relationship, or suffering from low self-esteem? Listen, I've been there. We have been there. If so, then today's BetterHelp wants to help you. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained and here to help you out. Talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your own convenience. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire and it's as simple as that, guys, to help with your specific needs and then get you matched with a therapist under 48 hours. After that, you schedule a secure video or phone session. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is confidential. We signed up for different reasons. And to be honest, it's legit. It helped us out a ton. You can request a different therapist at any point with no additional charge anytime. Join the two plus million people who took charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. This offer goes out to all our That One Piece Talk Nakama. You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash T-O-P-T. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash T-O-P-T. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Oh, I didn't know Marv couldn't hear us in those situations. He I'm gonna start talking. He can hear us. He can I'm hear gonna us start now. talking mad. Alright, guys, we're gonna get to phone calls. I know that you guys are here for that. Phone calls are coming in. We gotta do super chats first though, all right? And then we'll get to phone calls. Yeah, that means we're gonna speed run these super chats, guys. Uh we got ten dollars from Jeeds. It says, I did the math. In ten ninety seven, the chapter was thirty years ago. In ten ninety eight, at the end, the citizens say sixteen years ago. Bonnie is five at the time. Five plus 14 equals 19, so Bonnie is 19 years old, boys. Oda beating allegations. No, he is not. In the chapter, it blatantly says... 12. 
seven <laughs> years ago, Bonnie was five. Uh, so we got another <laughs> we got another eight month membership to Nakama status from our our guy the mod Toby. Thank you so much, Toby. It says, "Y'all looking good up there." Hashtag Dragon Gang. No. No, don't make that hashtag. Please. He's so weird, bro. Uh, we got another uh, 10 from Kevin G. It says, Dragon does not have the spin the block gene. Garp span for Kobe. Luffy spun for his crew. Dragon ain't spin not once. Not even once. Shaking my head. No, I mean, he does not. Yeah. Oh. We got another uh, subscription to Yonko status from Mugiwara Ichimi. Oh, uh, thank enjoy you. Enjoy everything that comes with being a Yonko. We got 50 from D. Uh, it says, Teach called Bonnie little girl and wife. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> I don't think Teach knew, but he not be in the allegations. Yeah. We got another five from <laughs> Loki D. It says, I'm sorry, but I can't respect Dragon. You're telling me that Dragon and his army couldn't do anything, but Ginny could uh, buy herself to escape. Uh, I think it was highlighted in the chapter that they kicked her out because she got sick. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, we got another 10 from Red Haired Shankdom. It says, Oda is trying to show us one monkey family willing to endure loss. Garp and Luffy absolutely refuse to accept that they will lose people and freak out when they do. That's a little true. We got another 10 from Anthony Herrera. It says, what's good, fam? Just got out of Udon. Quickie question. Who has the most tragic story, Law or Kuma? Uh, I put Kuma's up in the... the yeah, it's cool. Earlier, I'm, I'm probably going to Kuma. Law just had to crawl a couple bodies... Nah, that's not all I had to do. What? They we both got, lost everything. I, I know. He knows. He's trolling. We got another 100 N O K. I don't know if that's crowns or something. From Mika Loki, it says, "Will Kuma get a somewhat happy ending?" Larry was just speaking to this. Uh, like coming to Egghead and seeing Nika save Bonnie. By the way, Shanks D Zebek is real. Love you guys and your podcast every week. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank Hashtag. You. Larry has W takes. Thank you, man. Um, Thank you, guys. Thank you. I hope he does. Uh, I hope he does get a good thing. Nika saving Bonnie. I like that. Yeah. Him seeing it, that would be cool. Uh, We got another five. Him telling Bonnie that it's Nika. That could be Mm -hmm. cool, too. We got another five from Kevin G. It says, Ivankov spun the block for Ace. Probably felt bad for Ginny and won't let it happen again. Okay. Another five from Kecker's Boy. It says, Dragon is a revolutionary, not a hero. He cares about people, but will sacrifice them for his goals. He's got tunnel vision. Sabo is the hero they needed. Mm. Hey. Speak. Again, Luffy, <laughs> Luffy's not a hero. Hey, man. Another 10 from Anthony Herrera. He says, Yo, honestly, Dragon should have at least tried to plan something to save Ginny. Talking about never understood justice behind the back. Man, his son Luffy has more heart for his Nakama. Hashtag Dragon Fake AF. Nah, y'all being too crazy. I wasn't that harsh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's not fake. <laughs> yeah, he still believes in what he believes in. He's just, he's hamstrung. We got another five from Captain Kurt. It says, so we're going to act like Dragon didn't save Luffy from that execution. I mean. No comment. Bro. He didn't go there to save, like he didn't know Luffy was at Goa. <laughs> just. <laughs> Just, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not even speaking to it. Yeah, <laughs> Another 100 and okay from Mika says, did you guys notice that the first time we meet Bonnie, the Celestial Dragons are kidnapping a woman who wanted to marry someone else and forced her to be his wife? Oda foreshadowing on point as always. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I mentioned yeah. it. We mentioned yeah. it. I didn't even make the correlation though yeah, for real. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, we got another two from Bryce D. Waterlaw. It says, W. Seb, Sabo should be the face of the revolutionaries. He's becoming one. He or, is. is yeah. you know? We got true. another five from B... M. Rambo, it says, my theory is that Kuma will show up on Egghead and make Saturn pay for child support. <laughs> <laughs> also falls, <Larry>. huh? <laughs> Saturn could be Bonnie's dad. I doubt it, but he could be. We got another five from No, Jeans. they were saying, it, uh, I was saying it might be Charlos' dad. <laughs> ah, because be. Charlos was riding Kuma. Yeah, could be. And that would be... He also could have learned the whole abducted a wife thing from his dad. And yeah. Like, eh, eh. Hope hmm. not. That would make Charles and Bonnie brothers. Yeah. And sisters. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's rough. We got another five from G. It says, if, if Luffy is 19-ish, the Goa callback is when Dragon got with Luffy's mother in Goa. Unfortunately, we lost Ginny. Timelines matter. Uh, yeah. No, we... Uh, no, Luffy was already like... Yeah. Yeah. He was, what, like seven? Something like that? Yeah, when he had the tattoo. Yeah. Uh, when they lost her, yeah, he was... It was when Ace yeah. and... 
Yeah. Yeah. We said Madonna last episode. was fighting the Blue Jam Pirates. Well, Lionel was here. We said the time when he already had Luffy. Yeah. 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 He's on for that. We got another 10 from Nertaku who says, Much love for the shout out. Also, the cross has eight dots for the eight planets that resolve, revolve around the sun. Also, enjoying you guys getting on the Garp and Dragon train. They are each one half of Luffy. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah again, on my train. <laughs> <laughs> we got another five. We're running a train. Sh- Come on, bro. Okay. Bro, what are you talking Come about? On. <laughs> Got another five from Shadow. It says, based on Luffy's fighting style, would he ever be put in a position where he had to clip a villain? And if so, how would he do it? Um, By punching them. Punching really hard with a really big fist. We got another ten from Charge Meal. It says, Dragon and Garp prefer suffering and being in a familiar place rather than try new things and risk. Don't be like them. This podcast would never have been if our guys stayed in their comfort zone. Hashtag gold podcast. Thank you, Sean. Hey, oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Another 280. Dragon's from- girl's like, you want to try a different position? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> this missionary's fine. Yeah. What's wrong with you, bro? Yeah. Another five from Garbage D. Fish. It says, Whitebeard do nothing about Teach. He's soft too. Uh, little different. But- that is a little different, yeah. but it's still a knock on Whitebeard. It is. Yeah. It is. That, gotta, that's the thing too people be like yo we don't be knocking people yeah, yeah. listen like, I great. can knock you and love you bro I can yeah you. exactly no. I can knock you and love you I don't love Dragon though <laughs> I don't I don't <laughs> no what bears might do but the, the Odin and especially Thatch he should act you gotta stop saying the Odin thing bro Odin's not the same too. yeah but Thatch not, though bro. Thatch is still the Thatch, Thatch, yeah, Thatch, Thatch is yeah Thatch yeah, yeah for sure we got another 50 from D. It says, Blackbeard, I love little girls. Lolly is justice. How did this make it through? <laughs> Where the mods at? Mods. Are they- <laughs> Where the mods at, How did at, that bro? make it through? Bro? Where's the mods, bro? <laughs> we got another five from Bryce D. Water Law. Okay, so maybe this is obvious, but if Bonnie's disease progresses with her age, then I'm thinking maybe Kuma sacrifices himself to get her that fruit. Yeah, I mean, that, that tracks. Could be. We got another mm-hmm. 35 Zar. They were saying that it's the Celestial Dragon Syphilis. <laughs> I heard a, a oh more a darker goodness. a darker disease. Or... I said not. Nah, it's clap. Oh my! Just because <laughs> of Kuma's. I that, you, yeah, bro. it just makes sense. Uh, we got another thirty-five czar from Lundy, uh, but no comment attached. So thank you so much for the super. But let us know your words next time, on uh, Lundy. We got another ten from Victor Hate. It says, "With all we seen by Celestial Dragons, how do y'all imagine all of ending?" all of ending in the end we can't have it be that heroes become new oppressors or seek revenge for what was done can there be peace that's a loaded question man man. i don't know if we have the time to to dive that deep into that yeah that's loaded hit me hit me on the discord Vic. we got another five from alexander it says would would laugh if we get a bonnie i am your father from saturn bonus in the chapter features a lightsaber <laughs> <laughs> hashtag red grippy got me acting strange what she's 12 bro yo oh man can't say grippy uh it says rev i don't know who he's talking about specifically yeah bro we got two dollars from fell winter peak can kuma's paw paw really deflect everything uh, it can't deflect everything. It can't. No. It can only do mild things. It yeah. can't reflect emotional pain. But somehow he could just like exit out memories. So I don't know, bro. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. All right. Let's get to these phone call, guys. Uh, if you haven't liked the video already, please like the video for us. Let's do it, Mauve. Oh, man. It's a great chapter. It was a good it's chapter. It's a great chapter. Right? People were saying it sucked. That's because they felt away. Which, yeah, they were like, oh my god, my dragon is hurting. <laughs> my dragon is hurting. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece talk. How can I help you? I mean, how can I help you? How's it going? <laughs> uh, just, what's up, man? Yo, Xander. Andrew. Andrew, I'm so sorry. Bro. Can I take your order? Yeah, Sebastian's <laughs> laughing in my ear. I'm taking orders. Welcome to Good Bird. <laughs> what's up, Andrew? Yeah, what's good, Larry? I mean, Larry. Oh, oh good. my <laughs> God! There's no way, bro. 4K. No. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm so- <laughs> yeah. You don't got time, Andrew. What's your question? <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so with Egg, with with Egghead right now, it seems like it's gonna probably like wrap up rather soon. So, what are some of your like favorite moments from the arc so far? Dragon getting slandered. Um, no, I'm joking. 
when Luffy rocked Kazaru with that punch one in shot? the dome. Yeah, that yeah, was, that was that pretty was great. Because I, it just fit my agenda of the Yonkos and Admiral Strike. The flashback, one, the, the whole arc's been great. The yep. cutaways to other things, Garp on uh, Beehive and, and some of the other stuff. Um, but when they cut mm-hmm. back to the Straw Hats and everybody was like, good. I know I complained about it in the moment because we didn't get to see how it went down, but mm-hmm. I thought the, the that moment was great. Yeah, I thought the moment itself was great. Shaka getting sniped, oh. York's reveal. Like, there's been so great. many great moments in Egghead already, and this this flashback alone. Yeah, that yeah. double spread of rocks. Yeah, Egghead going crazy. Yeah, yeah man. I I really mm-hmm. like um, Vega Punk explaining how Devil Fruits work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's my favorite mm-hmm. so far. My second favorite would probably be just seeing the Rocks Pirates. Um, but I think if we do get to see Rocks this arc, that would be my favorite. Just because, like, I'm a huge fan of rock, so I'm gonna be biased. <laughs> but how about you, Andrew? Oh yeah, just I like the flashback between like Dragon and Vegapunk, even though I hated Dragon this chapter. But I really like that like little flashback they got. Um, Kizaru packing up Luffy in the beginning was pretty dope. Um, doll, just doll. Mm. <laughs> nice. I gotta yeah. spray you down, bro. Hey. Wait, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> no, like with a spray bottle. Stop. All right, oh, never mind, bro. Okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, and just, and just the, I think the last one for me is just the whole Garp situation at, at Hachinosu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's probably just mainly it. Also, after this chapter, you know, um, Black, we're definitely on FBI watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so before you go, right, before we take another call, can you just say why you hate a dragon? No, I didn't. No, I was just like, I was just irritated with his actions. Since like, what, what, what happened? So when it happened, regarding to when he said like, I like live your life without no regrets, it kind of got me a little irritated. Hmm. Why is that? I don't. It was kind of, I feel like um, Lord, what Warren said earlier. Sorry, I kind of, I'm sorry. It's like my dog is on the way. So. Um, it was just kind of like with the way he was saying that to Kuma, it almost like sounded like he didn't care. But I do understand like from both sides what what people are saying about like that whole situation but i probably just had to have some time just to think about it all right that's interesting but uh andrew thank you for the call man thank you for the question yeah no problem also emu gang <laughs> wait yo, you gotta stop bro. how you gonna switch from you gotta yeah. stop hey, bro emu gang is wild bro i might i might hey. be one day jeez it's like i just said dragon gang or something <laughs> Oh yeah. man, thanks for the call, Andrew. You probably wouldn't want to be a part of Dragon King. He wouldn't save you. Or your girl. <laughs> no. He's like, no, see, I'll deal. <laughs> see you, Andrew. See you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> see, this is how my one works. How are you going to come at Dragon for not saving uh, Jenny? But then say Emu Game when he kind of promotes this stuff. So, this is his people doing it. This is where I have conflict. Emu with that. Ain't never did that, to our knowledge. <laughs> Why do you think he want Vivi? Mm. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? Aha! 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 Yo, what the? Yo, yo, who is this? Who is yo. this, bro? This is Anthony from Uda. We talking about? Hey, hey, hey what's, hey, up, what's bro? up, bro? What's good? <laughs> All right, well. I got a quickie question because I go pick up my pops. But um, it's going to be out because I did, I did get to last stream late. But what would um, what would what would happen if Luffy brought Zoro to Whole Cake Island? That's been bothering my mind. And I just need to know y'all's opinion. Like, what, what would Zoro do in Nami's position? Like, remove Nami from, from that arc and put Zoro in. I didn't know I didn't, I didn't know what what's going on. We've had this talk we, we super have. long ago. A while back, yeah. Uh, my Ooh. opinion hasn't changed. So like like Zoro just did after Wano, he told Luffy you're not going to go save Vivi. Uh would I think he he held that same stance towards Luffy since Water 7 when he told Luffy you can't just have Usopp back into the crew. They, they right, right. And, and the point is, everybody forgets during that time, Sanji's uh, 
like his his motivations were never revealed yeah. to Luffy. Like mm-hmm. it was never revealed to Nami, nobody. He was the only person that knew what was happening. So if Zoro saw that and then he saw Sanji kicking on Luffy and all that, that's it, bro. I'm, I'm yep. going to be honest. I just don't think Sanji takes the same action. He probably does that, it. That's the, that's the real difference. Yo, because he knows <laughs> Zoro would have stepped up. It would have yeah. been a different situation. And a lot of people would be like, nah, that wouldn't have happened. Be, he would have listened to Luffy. I'm telling you, bro. He's gone against Luffy multiple times so far. And the people don't even realize, because what did Zoro say with the Usopp thing? He goes, if one, because Sanji even backed Zoro, said, this is our captain, right? And he goes, is that easy to leave the crew? And then Luffy being disrespected. Because Luffy, Zoro got mad at Luffy saying that I let you be my captain. Like, I'm not going to tolerate you being disrespected of how you're going to be, how you're running or captaining the crew. And he even also says, if this continues the way you're captaining, I don't like, next is I'm leaving the crew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The and now going to the situation where, like, you have Sanji doing that, like Larry Brungo didn't know Sanji's actions or why he did it. If Zoro's, and say like Sanji still decides to act the same like that, like, there's no way Zoro's going to stand for this because lately he's been coming at Luffy more, like, yo, shape up, stop letting your guard down, all this stuff. And if you just, like, Occasionally, just let Sanji back in. Zoro's not gonna take that. We have potentially where Zoro just leaves the crew on Whole Cake yeah. because, like, this, this is not you're not the captain I thought you were. I think the only difference here is slight difference is that Zoro has respect for Sanji in a sense that he knows how strong Sanji is and what he means for the crew. So there might be a small part of him that's like, okay, why is he acting this way? That like, what what do they have over you that's causing you to act this way, right? Right, but if he sees him kicking Luffy, he's gonna be. Fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> is it? Like he, that's why I don't think Sanji does that. I don't think he, I don't think he could do it. If Sanji, he doesn't hit... think he could get away with it. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, hold on. So you you think that when you think Sanji's not gonna kick Luffy, it's Zoro then? Because in my opinion, I feel like when if Sanji's you know kicking Luffy, and then Zoro sees it, bro, he's cutting them. Like that's crazy. Like he's cutting them from the spot. Like just like. This is me. If I see my homeboy getting kicked like that by his other homeboy that I didn't know that I grew up with, I'm 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 jumping. I'm jumping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because again, so in Sanji's mind, happens. in Sanji's mind, he he knew Luffy wouldn't actively fight him, right? Yeah. He doesn't have that yeah. same belief. Like Zoro's gonna fight me. It's not gonna yeah. end with me leaving and then potentially leaving. I'm gonna have to now fight Zoro. See, I you don't. Know what I'm saying? I don't think that. Zoro actually attacks him. I think what would happen was he would let Luffy do whatever he's doing if Sanji decided to do that. Afterwards, Zoro would have to deal with Luffy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what would happen. That it would be Zoro and Luffy end up fi- probably fighting after that. He's like, yo, I'm leaving the crew. Yeah. And then Luffy has to decide whether to stay on Whole Cake or go after Zoro. Mm-hmm. It creates that dynamic because he did it with Usopp. Mm-hmm. He's like, yo, go handle your business with Usopp. Make sure he doesn't join back, and we leave. Mm-hmm. If you decide to stay, I leave the crew. Yep. Yeah, and, and that's game. Mm-hmm. No more straw hats. Yeah, I call. do. I do wonder what his reaction would be once he learned of the reasoning behind stuff. But yeah. once the once the kicking is happening, it's different. So it it's past that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But and appreciate the call, man. Yeah, chill on jumping, yeah. people, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> I mean. All right, right, brother. Thank you so much for the question. Yeah, thanks for calling. All right, you too. Peace. Now they're bugging. What what time is it? 8.57? Ooh. I said 8.57. 7.57, right? All right, we're going to stop calls. Marv's already like, yo, we stopping calls, dog. Um... (laughs) Yeah, that was a great question. We had a super chat, right? We do have one more super chat from Garbage D Fish. It says, uh, at 280, it says, Rayleigh Soft 2 didn't try to save Ace. Rayleigh and Ace is a very different situation to me. Nope. It's a very different nope. situation to me. Very nope. different. Very mm-hmm. different. Very different. Nah. Very different. That is not different. He, he's never even met that kid. I do not yeah, care. Listen, listen, bro. Listen. Do not care, it's bro. It's not the same. It is very much it's the same. It's not the same. Bro, he literally <laughs> cried for Whitebeard. But for not he knew him. He admires <laughs> Roger. Like Roger literally told stories about how his son was gonna be the one to, to find the One Piece. Mm-hmm. That they were too early, so his kid would take it on. He knew he had a kid. But you decide to just sit on the hill 
and drink and shed a tear for White Bear, but not for Ace. He may have not known until they announced it, though. That's come on, Lawrence. No, what you mean? How, how, how would he know? know? How would he know? How would he know? How would he know? How would he know, Larry? Because remember, how would he know? There's Roger no did, way Roger that Ray did disband know. the crew, bro, and it, then go to his wife. There's he no disbanded way. Disbanded the crew. Bro, first. There's no way, bro. For a full year. There's no way, bro. I'm telling you right now. He disbanded crew for a full year. There's no way. Hold on. Hold on. Ask you how he would. Hold on. Does Shanks know? How would Shanks I don't know that Shanks does Shanks, either. I, I don't know if Shanks knows. The, only way, the only way is that, well, why would Shanks say it, is when Ace went to go meet Shanks. Yeah. But, oh, I'm Roger. He's not but they talked about Luffy. Yeah, yeah, guys, we got to wrap, but I got two more soups. Uh, right. We got two from Kyron Calhoun. It says, just got to say, Seb, you the real GOAT, bro. Uh, why? That. Why? <laughs> why? Why is he the real GOAT? And right. another two from Terrence Matthews. It's so hard to call in these days. Yeah, we're going to try to get the calls quicker. Next week is break week, so we should be doing much more calls, guys. Yeah, um, next week is break week. Yeah. I'm thinking about collabing with somebody. I just don't know who yet. Okay. But we'll see. But, um, yeah, well, I'll mention it. But, yeah, guys, listen. Uh, if you haven't liked the video, please like the video. To all our Spotify listeners, thank you so much. Uh, I, I forgot to mention this on Spotify. Uh, if you don't want commercials at all, I tried to put it the lowest I could for the subscription price and it was like two dollars so if you want to just pay the two dollars that way you don't have to listen to commercials you're more than welcome if not just hit the skip button on commercials and deal with that um marv has been putting out the videos for spotify so if you wanted to watch on spotify you're more than welcome now also to everybody that continuously supports us thank you so much we just hit twenty thousand on facebook hey. so we just jumped on facebook uh, so thank you so much to Marv. Thank you guys to you. And that's it. My name is Larry. Lawrence. Sam. And Lionel. This is that One Piece talk. Jana. <laughs>